Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, we're doing this video for uh, KRS channel and Kapil Raj. And uh, this is the Nakshatra series that we've been doing with uh, KRS channel. And um, I want to introduce you to the, the panel today. We're going to discuss about Uttara Falguri Nakshatra. And I've got a, a big panel who is, and when you talk about Having a panel is all, always good that we get to learn so much from interactions. And that's what I would like to, I would be, you know, kind of moderating this or rather, you know, facilitating this. And I would like to learn from these people. So today on the panel of discussion, we have uh, Bharat Ram. Uh, welcome, Bharat. And uh, then we also have uh, Dr. Aditya Togi. We have uh, Eve Mendoza of Eve of Astrology, and we have Dr. Kanoli Santip Krishna. Welcome, everybody. So, namaste. namaste. So, let's commence today's discussion on uh, Uttara Falguri Nakshatra. So, Bharat, do you want to go first with what you have to say about Uttara Falguri? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'll begin my presentation on Uttra Falguni. I have a very short presentation on Uttra Falguni. It's called Uttra Falguni Applique. Applique, as you know, is a kind of cloth work where you take small bits of cloth and sew it on a larger bit of larger piece of cloth to form a pattern. Similarly, when you take a constellation and place it in a particular house, it will give a different result or a different look. So if you place Uttra Falguni in house number one, it will give a different look. If you pay, place Uttra Falguni in house number two, it will place a different look. So let's understand how Uttra Falguni works for different kinds of people. Now, before I begin that, I would like to talk about the deity of Uttra Falguni. The deity of Uttra Falguni is Aryaman. Some call it Aryama. So either Aryama or Aryaman. Who's Aryaman? According to many books, Aryaman or Aryama is a friend. However, according to me, Aryaman is not a friend. Aryaman is more like a boss who's friendly, but not a friend. If you take Arjun, Arjun is called the Falguni because he was born when both Uttra Purva Falguni and Uttra Falguni were when the moon was transiting both Purva Falguni and Uttra Falguni. So Arjun is a true Purva Falguni or a true Uttra Falguni. And Arjun had an Aryaman who was Krishna. Krishna was not Arjun's friend. Neither was he Arjun's boss. But he was the person who guided Arjun at all points of time to see that Arjun did never Arjun never followed the part of path of adharma and that Arjun always maintained dharma or followed the path of dharma. So Krishna always guided Arjun at all points of time. Similarly, if you've seen the movie or heard about the movie Godfather, Vito Corleone was the boss of the Godfather family or the boss of the mafia family. And when his third son, Michael Corleone, refused to enter the mafia business, it was the job of the Aryama or Vito Corleone to guide his third son to enter the business of mafia, of being a mafia. But Michael Corleone was the only educated son of the dawn, but, and he refused to enter the mafia business. So as the Aryama or as the head of the family, it was the job of Vito Corleone to guide his son into the mafia business because he thought that was the best thing his son could ever do. So don't make a mistake. Just because you're Uttra Falguni doesn't mean you're always good. Doesn't mean you're always an Arjun who has a Krishna. You could be a Michael Corleone who has a Vito Corleone to guide you. So an Aryama or an Aryaman can either be a god or can be a gangster. So let's look at, let's look at some of the features of Uttra Falguni. Uttra Falguni is ruled by the sun, which is a natural malefic. The sun represents power, strength, and dominance. The sun represents masculine energy. The sun is the planet which gives you courage. 
when you're placed when you're faced with difficulties the sun is the planet which gives the aryaman uh, insight sun is the planet of insight and those people who have an aryaman will do anything for the aryaman you will do anything for your senior friend it is like nandi's devotion to shiva or it is like hanuman's devotion to ram it is complete devotion if you have a planet in uttra falguni it is very likely that you have a senior statesman as your friend and you will do anything for that friend and that friend will always guide you properly now let's see where if uttra falguni is placed in your chart depending on where uttra falguni is placed in your chart you will get different results for example if uttra falguni is placed in the first house of your chart then it's very likely that you are a mentor and you're very particular about contracts and agreements and you protect yourself with contracts and agreements if uttra if if uttra falguni is in your second house then it is very possible that you secure your family and wealth with contracts and agreements and you speak the legal language you speak in legalese if uttra falguni is in the third house then that means you demand a contract and an agreement even when you are dealing with your siblings and neighbors you don't spare anyone if uttra falguni is in your fourth house then probably you do a lot of contracts with the government or you do a lot of real estate or realty contracts you could be an advisor to the government either a good advisor or the bad or a bad advisor you may be good at real estate or you may be bad at real estate depending upon what planets are in uttra falguni and what's the dignity of those planets if uttra falguni is in the fifth house it's possible that you're an advisor to a very senior uh, person in the government or a senior person in your company you have the desire to document everything if uttra falguni is on the six in your sixth house then probably you deal with doctors you have a contract with doctors perhaps you work work with the pharmaceutical industry or perhaps you deal with documents pertaining to loans or documents pertaining to banking matters and if pur uttra falguni is in your seventh house then prenuptial contracts were devised for you it was made for you if uttra falguni is in the eighth house then that means you are you, you could be dealing with debts and you could be dealing with insurance contracts and you could be an insurance advisor if uttra falguni is in your ninth house then probably you are a you are a guru or a teacher and who works on the basis of contracts and on the basis of consultancy or draws out consultancy contracts if uttra falguni is in your 10th house then probably you are the legal or commercial head of an organization your work relates to making commercial or business contracts if uttra falguni is in your 11th house then you possibly have an income which comes from making wealth or income contracts you make a living by making contracts you could be a lawyer and if uttra falguni is in the 12th house then you could be making investment contracts and you could be an investment agent now the question arises how do you deal with uttra falguni let's say you have you know somebody who's an uttra falguni if you know somebody who's an uttra falguni then you approach the uttra falguni through a confidant a confidant is like nandi the bull in india if a devotee has to worship lord shiva or the devotee has to request shiva for something the devotee first goes to nandi and whispers his request into nandi's ears and it is nandi who communicates this request of the devotee to shiva so if you know an uttra falguni native then approach the uttra falguni native not directly but through a confidant of the uttra falguni native the other point about uttra falguni is that speak the truth with the uttra falguni native because they have the capacity to absorb bad news like shiva he absorbed the poison when the ocean was being churned when the ocean was being churned vasuki the serpent which was being used as a churning rope spewed poison because vasuki got agitated and it was shiva who drank all the poison in order to save the world but as shiva was consuming the poison some bits of poison fell from shiva's mouth on the earth and that small bits of poison was also going to probably ruin the earth and it was nandi the bull who who consumed those few drops which are going to spill out of shiva's mouth 
So like Nandi has the capacity to absorb poison, like Shiva has the, has the ability to absorb poison, and Uttra Falguni native has the capacity to absorb bad news. So give the Uttra Falguni native the bad news. The Uttra Falguni native has the ability to absorb the bad news. Uttra Falguni natives are number crunchers, especially if Uttra Falguni falls in the Virgo side of the zodiac. So be very sure about your facts when you present the facts to them, because if you are not sure of the facts, it'll be it's possible that the Uttra Falguni native will make holes in your argument that you present that you present to them. The other point about Uttra Falguni native is due to the sun. They have very penetrating insight. They have deep insight into everything. So be absolutely sure of your logic when you're presenting a matter to, to an Uttra Falguni native. So that's it. I have that's what I have on Uttra Falguni. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you. Ramji, this, this, this was absolutely fantastic. I love some of the love points which you made. It was very great. And one of the points that I would like to uh, just discuss or add to is your point about Nandi. The animal totem which is associated with Uttara Falguni is a male cow or a bull. And um, in India, there is a there is a ritual that you follow when you have to worship Shiva. Okay, they say you don't go into a Shiva mandir or a Shiva temple, and you just don't go into the sanctum sanctorium or where the shivaling is. The first thing that you do as a ritual is you stand, where, you know, just beside a bull. Usually there is a bull which is sitting just outside, which is Nandi, which is sitting just outside, and typically what um, they do is. Um, you know, they hold one ear of the bull and they touch the tail of the bull. Okay, yeah. they see something in the ear. Okay, and usually they request Nandi's permission to actually look at Shiva or look at the shivling. You don't look at the shivling till you have to stand slightly behind the Nandi. You know, because it is believed that the the shivling is a modern nuclear reactor. If you see all the nuclear reactors in the world, they look like a shivling. And it's very, it's very astonishing to see that um, the nuclear reactors have uh, a coolant, a water coolant, which actually keeps the reactor, you know, cool. And what do you see with the shivling? There's drops of water falling on the shivling. It's basically keeping the rudra calm. You know, that's why we call it rudrabhishek. You try to pacify the rudra, the energy of the rudra, the anger of the rudra with water. And this drops of water is a coolant which is keeping. So whenever we go in there, it's believed. Back. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. Uh, this, uh, yeah, I think this problem with the internet. Anyway, so you just stand behind Nandi because the first rays that you get from Shiva, they say is tamasic. Okay, and then it's uh, sorry, it's first is rajasic, then it's tamasic. And when the, the tamasic are coming, what they say is they, if you, you take two fingers, you put it on the horn of the Nandi, and then you look at the Shivling. That's the first thing that you do. And then when the Satvik rays are going to come, because you've now got the permission of Nandi, the confidant that you're talking about, then you get the permission to enter the, uh, and do the, you know, when the Satvik rays or the Satvik energies are coming that's when you get to go into the sanctum and that's when you can do the abhishek yourself you can worship shiva so this is something you know what i've seen as a ritual many of them don't even know and don't even follow this but this is a very important point that you have brought uh, in Bharat. unless any of the other panelists wanted to add something you know this is uh, great um any of them want to share it was, i really like the uh, like Uttara Falguni in different houses, like each different house. That was really nice. And one more thing uh, I would like to point is Uttara Fal. I think Bharat, we lost uh, Bharat Ramji. Oh, yeah. So for Uttara Falguni, there will be two houses, correct, Bharat Ramji, because it will fall in two different houses. So is it Bharat Ramji is muted? Is he saying something? Yeah, that's right. You're right. So we have to consider the effects of two, both the houses, correct? In the analysis. 
that's right that's right depending upon where it is uh, actually placed in your chart if it is in the leo side or uh, which is the first pada or which is uh, in the virgo side no i'm not getting because in everyone's uttara falguni there will be this uttara falguni will be occupying two houses so oh, it depends upon which house that is you know it's house number 1 2 3 4 5 6 so depending upon where your lagna is placed the house number will change the rashi will remain the same but the house number will change so the planet will be placed in a particular degree with an uttara falguni yeah yeah so but then, if there's no planet then no i am i am not i am not assuming any planet because you know uh, placement of a planet will significantly modify everything okay but i am just saying it is quite likely that many people don't have anything in uh, uh, uttara falguni but uttra falguni is still there and it's placed in a particular house when counted from the lagna it could be the 12th house it could be the 5th house yeah i'm i'm saying it can, it will be it will be two so for example if you take aries lagna then the uttra falguni will be in 5th house as well as 6th house that's right if that's it, right yeah so, so you have to take both you have both. to take both you have to take yeah. both so yeah that's right yeah another important point uh, which i would like to add uh, before i forget is uh, aryaman in today's times is also considered as uh, the best man or in in marriages or uh, you know the the bride's maid is that correct I, i don't know whether you call that the best man and the bride's maid they are the aryamans you know of today because they help you or even in some texts they believe that you know aryaman is the your your dear friend who goes asking for um you know asking for the hand of a partner so usually what happens in indian marriages is usually you send somebody to the uh, the bride's house uh, asking for the bride to marry the friend or marry a relative of theirs it's a ritual and it's followed even today he becomes the aryaman who goes seeking uh, for you know a marital uh, agreement or contract between him Uh, between the the partner and the and the the man it usually happens in indian weddings okay so anybody else um, either uh, santay or ipshi do you want to yeah, uh, i just yeah. want to i just want to add that uh, what bharatram ji highlighted about uh, uttar falguni can become like either the godfather or like <laughs> they can be the god that was a very uh, good point because they, they they tend to have a you know a just this point is that they tend to have this thing about them like they tend to have a godfather kind of vibe about them so like one when they come about or whenever they are around you they have this like seniority i'm the chief amongst the ancestor uh, aryaman vibe so there was a very godfather reference was brilliant you know i always love it whenever he brings that up because immediately you can connect to that kind of uh, uttara falguni energy and uh, yeah but i'm sure people will argue about whether krishna was arjuna's friend or whether he was his godfather <laughs> but uh, but even, even in spite of that uh, that godfather was a very uh, i think a very great way to look at uttara falguni so also eg also mentioned before about how uttara falguni is very masculine bull and uh, all of that so uh, dr pai also talked about bull that was also very uh, in that way also godfather was also very fitting uh, description so i just want to highlight that point you know Yeah, Bart Ramji, I would actually like to tell you that that was a very accurate analysis based on things that I've seen over the years. It was very beautiful and um I have, you know, all people have to do is look at the chart of Anton LaVey, <laughs> who was this, the leader of the Satanic Church to see the dark side of Uttara Falguni. So what you're saying there is very significant and all of the famous James Bond characters the ones that have stayed famous most of them have had prominent uttara falguni and this is that symbol symbol of the you know masculine you think of arjun he was you know he was <laughs> he was like this very you know capable man very masculine energy the hero of the story in many ways so i see this a lot with uttara falguni that there is this heroic side to it and for women what i find interesting is it really grants the fruit from the tree you know through that graha or that planet they'll get their shiva you know there's something with this sign that's like 
um, there is a very positive sign in many ways. Even if you have negative so-called malefic grahas in this sign, it still will turn it into a fruit. And so I loved your presentation as far as also dealing with contracts because this sign is all about union. It is all about, Porva Falguni and Uttara Falguni are all about union, both of them. But Uttara Falguni in the sense that these are those partnerships, the contracts that we make with others that benefit our soul's path. That's the positive side of Uttara Falguni. And you'll see many, many, you know, I think Elizabeth Taylor is a very famous Uttara Falguni. You see the women, like some of the classics say that the person will be voluptuous. You know, it's like a, being able to attract a partner. So like Elizabeth Taylor, she's very voluptuous. She's very attractive. Um, a lot of the women with it are, are um, you know, some people are born into wealth. This is another common thing is being born into wealth. That This star has a lot to do with wealth. Um, and you'll see numerous celebrities in the media are people that have some prominent planet, Uttara Falguni, that are dead set on animal rescue and um that lord of animals shouldn't be overlooked for this sign right it's it's a desire to be pashupati the, the lord of the animals so um this sign you'll see many people getting involved in charities i mean um i i can't remember her name but there's there's a woman who is in the public eye and she she goes out there i mean she goes she swims with the killer wells to rescue these seals you know it's a very heroic sign it's almost fearless in a way um and so and i i wanted to honor your connection with nandi i have always associated this sign with nandi Always. It has always been a major, because um, he's the one that escorts Lord Shiva and Mother Parvati to, to Kailash. And this is the, Uttar Falguni is the vehicle. It's the merit. It is, the merit is the vehicle that transports you to Kailash. And it's the protection, punya. It's the, the, these two signs are very meritous. They're very full of punya. They're the fruits of punya. And you think of Arjun, he was the most fruitful tree who the Lord himself, Krishna, be befriends. He's the most fruitful tree. So this is, all of this is so significant. And I, um, thank you, Bart Ramji. I just wanted to honor that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was good. Like what I learned was connecting, you know, Nakshat, what Bharat Ramji did was nakshatra themes and houses. If it falls on different houses, so houses energies and nakshatras energies. If you combine, maybe I should try to make chart for all the twenty-seven nakshatras in twelve houses. That would be great, Aditya. If you can do that, Bharat Ramji would have made. I, I don't know. We should. We should. I think no, this, I have not. I have not. Uh, I think that. Would be but that is good. something I learned. Maybe we should do that. Maybe. And, uh, you know, that was beautiful that Eve, she mentioned about, uh, you know, she told, she stole my thunder because I was going to talk about uh, animals uh, because this nakshatra is connected, is called the Lord of the Animals. And the Shakti of this nakshatra is called as uh, Chayani Shakti, Chayani. And you see the same thing that you see Chayani here in Uttara Palguni is the merit. And then you have Punya Chayani for Chitra Nakshatra, which is connected to Chitra Gupta. So a lot of merit is there within these nakshatras and that unlocking will happen. And because of the merit which is there, this nakshatra was considered to be very, very suitable for uh, conducting marriages. And that's why all most of the, you know, Shiva and Parvati were supposed to have got married when, you know, it was like Gargarishi was sitting with the, you know, an ephemeris and he wanted to see whenever moon just transits, uh, transited into uh, Uttara Falguni, he asked them to exchange woes or exchange garlands. Things. So that auspicious this uh, nakshatra is. And it's very interesting to see Dwarakarishi was just waiting for a time when it transited into um, Uttara Falguni. And if you really see in the Navamsha, it would have just entered uh, Mula. And Mula is the, the nakshatra of deity um, Nairuti or Kali. So that's uh, another thing that you can see, you know, as, as soon as moon enters into the Mula, Mula is the connection, the root connection. They were, 
they, they exchange rules or exchange garlands. So I think contracts, unions, all of these are beautiful. So let's go to uh, Aditya Ji next, Dr. Togi. And Dr. Togi is going to talk about, uh, you know, something about astronomy and uh, some, he's also going to talk about some mythology. I think he loves uh, uh, Greek mythology. That's his yeah, forte. Uh, yeah, I, I... I, I don't know whether I have today Greek mythology. I have today Indian mythology. So I will talk about Indian mythology. Yes. So I think, yeah, I know uh, many points. I think we have already discussed. So everyone can see my screen here. Yeah, please try to interrupt and ask questions in between. So as Uttara Falguni is also considered the star of patronage where Eve you mentioned about a lot of wealth and um, materialistic things are a native is gained if they have prominent planets in Uttara Falguni and and try to break the word you know Uttara Falguni so when you say I think well, I should uh, yeah maybe so if you break the word of Uttara Falguni, Uttara, now what do you mean by Uttara? Like Uttara Ramayan, Uttara Kalamrit, like Uttar means always later, after, post, you know, later. Fal is fruit, Guni is meritorious. So it's like post-meritorious fruits to the native. So this Nakshatra will provide like post-meritorious fruits to a native. Like unless like unlike Purva Falguni, Purva was what? Purva, Purva means previous meritorious fruits of the life. And uh, so there are a lot of lot of blessings associated with this nakshatra, and uh, very good for wealth. And many wealthy people are, have this prominent Uttara Falguni in their charts. And as Bharatramji mentioned, it is basically the ruler is the sun, also called Aryaman. And it's a nice picture, Wikipedia picture of of of, of sun. Now I will try to always like to connect with the with the astronomical aspects of, of, of this nakshatra. So this is where again you see the Leo constellation. This is the lion's head here. This star is Magha, Magha. This star is Purva Falguni, these two stars. And these two stars, this one star which is also called as Denebola, that is what forms the star of Uttara Falguni. So if you see, now I always like to connect the organs of that animal which is which we imagine in the sky with with the with the physical body. Now, if you say Uttara Falguni is this star, this star comes in the lower back region of this animal, which is lion. And also remember the symbol is also for Uttara Falguni and Purva Falguni is like the cord. Purva Falguni is the front legs of the bed and Uttara Falguni is also the back legs of the bed. So it's like these two are the front legs of the bed and this is like the back leg of the bed. So it's like persons having some malefic planets in Uttara Falguni can have a, like a lower back region problem or maybe sexual organs problem, something like that. So if, try to see if you have any malefic aspects on this uh, one Uttara Falguni star. And as Dr. Pai mentioned, it is Shakti, which is Chayani, which is prosperity through marriage. And we will discuss about this, um, uh, about marriage concepts and all in my uh, succeeding slides. So I would like to talk some of the aspects of this nakshatra, which is result of Shakti basis and desires wealth accumulation. So you can see again the wealth connection. Foundation above is given as wealth obtained from one's family. Foundation below is wealth obtained from the partner or partner's family. So you see there are a lot of, if, if there's any keywords associated with this nakshatra, you can see all this highlighted in yellow. It's like wealth coming more and more and more. So it's like something related to definitely related to wealth. Desire, as I think again, E.G. mentioned, was become the lord of the animal, the Pashupatina, lord of the like Pashu, lord of the animal, Pashupatina. So Pashu is like animal, and Nath is like the Swami or the lord of the animals. So when you say about Uttarafal Gunni, naturally your mind thinks about Lord Shiva. So there's also Lord Shiva connection. And of course, it was as Dr. Pai mentioned that it was this nakshatra was at the time when Shiva and Parvati got married when the moon transited this nakshatra. So again, the Shakti is Chinese Shakti, which is prosperity, wealth and accumulation. So definitely a lot of connection with wealth. And why you do any, like we were talking about contracts, we were talking about agreements, so contract agreements, financial contracts, financial agreements, so related to wealth 
and remember uttara falguni one pada comes in uh, leo and the three other padas comes in virgo like first pada of uttara falguni is in leo but second third and fourth pada comes in virgo virgo is associated with mercury mercury is associated with business and definitely in business you need to have contracts you know agreement wealth money all those things so definitely it's natural to think about uttara falguni and the wealth connection there the other reason is other thing which i like to do study about nakshatra is divide nakshatra into different padas and then see their rashi lord nakshatra lord and navamsha lord like if you take the first pada the first pada of uttara falguni comes in mula or comes into sagittarius uh, navamsha so the rashi lord the first pada uh, is comes in leo rashi so the lord is sun nakshatra lord is sun always because the uttara sun rules uttara falguni so the nakshatra lord is always sun and navamsha lord that is the first pada navamsha is sagittarius that is basically ruled by jupiter the second pada second third and fourth pada comes under virgo rashi so the rashi lord for second third and fourth is mercury nakshatra lord will be the same for all the cases so it's sun but remember the second pada is in uh, capricorn which is ruled by saturn the third pada is aquarius which is ruled again by saturn and the fourth pada comes in the meena rashi which is pisces ruled by jupiter so the prominent planet if you just see the connection sun sun jupiter mercury sun jupiter mercury sun saturn mercury sun jupiter so what are the and remember this two padas first pada and the fourth pada is also the pushkara navamsha because it's a sun sun ruled nakshatra so it's a first and fourth pada pushkara navamsha and if i ask you what are the main planets here associated when you consider rashi nakshatra and navamsha is sun mercury jupiter and saturn these are the main planets so once you know these planets what you can do is you can try to then think of what are the qualities associated with these planets like we know mercury is logic mercury is reasoning analyzing accounting again when i say accounting you see business wealth again coming there the sun is also like ruling administration jupiter is knowledge wisdom service effort is basically related to saturn so all these qualities of logical reasoning analyzing accounting knowledge wisdom and depending on the pada if if there is a strong say second pada of or third pada of uh, uttara falguni then um, if you have a prominent planet in the third pada then it's mercury sun saturn so you can think about the native has to be logic all the qualities of planets of mercury sun and saturn will be uh, dominant or predominant or you can see much more effects of these planets in in that native so you can discern between what qualities that person may have if you so this is one way of of my learning i do all the pada levels i see what is the rashi nakshatra and navamsha lord then take a combination of that and try to basically make a sense of uh, the qualities which an individual can show up also uh, as dr pai mentioned uh, there was this nakshatra was associated with the marriage of shiva and parvati and what in, even in astronomical uh, when you focus your telescope near this star you will see lot of that that is also virgo cluster of galaxies which is very near to the star of uttara falguni and hasta so you will see uh, many galaxies coming together now i associate that with the marriage you know what happens in a marriage marriage is like collection of people collection of friends collection of relatives family friends many people coming together okay <clears throat> so it's like the same concept you see in in space basically because what are what we are on earth is like same is like uh, galaxies and stars are uh, in space they are also like living entities i feel they are living entities uh, in the space so it's like collection of people on earth and there is like collection of stars and galaxies on on sky and that's what remembers me whenever dr pai say as above so below so it's exactly fit, fits into that theme of virgo cluster of galaxies like the marriage thing concept like in marriage we have many people coming similarly in this region of region of sky we have so many galaxies it's called a virgo cluster of galaxies because it's near virgo sign so it's called virgo Oh, cluster of galaxies clusters in many galaxies coming together it's like some marriage event happening uh, um, in the sky 
then i was looking about beta leonis and the properties of denebola and trying to see if that can be correlated now beta leonis is 75% massive than the sun and 15 times sun's luminosity it's 36 light years away variation in luminosity and disk like structures or circumstellar debris so these are some of the qualities like you can see it is way massive than the sun way luminous than the sun and the main thing which caught my attention was you know the circumstellar debris disk so that was something very interesting now why i say about uh, about uh, circumstellar debris disk whenever i see the circumstellar circum circum is what circular and stellar is like star so circular stellar stars disk that is very because the story is very related to the sudarshan chakra story i feel so it was like uh, because you see the main planets associated with uttara falguni are like the mercury and the sun and the mercury is basically connected to lord vishnu and the sun is connected to lord shiva so it's like vishnu is hari and sun is shiva hara and hari hara energy so you can see the mercury and sun are the dominant planet which showers their blessings on this nakshatra it's basically the blessings of vishnu and shiva on them or hari hara energy and then i thought i was trying to connect this with the circumstellar disk like what happens is that uh, basically vishnu was trying to pray shiva for uh, sudarshan chakras like like he was basically praying and then he bought thousand lotus to pray for shiva uh, but what he found was there were only 999 and it was said that he, he once he started he can't get up he can't break the prayer so it's like now he has done the prayer and only for one lotus he has to break his which he was not ready to do so he said okay he, i think uh, what he said is like his own eyes is like a lotus so he was plucking his own eyes and pluck with pluck and he was ready to pluck his eyes and offer to shiva at that time shiva appeared and he was very happy with the uh, prayer of Lord Vishnu, and it was said that Shiva granted uh, Sudarshan Chakra to Vishnu. So when I saw the Sudarshan Chakra concept with the circumstellar disk, so I was I was relating the circumstellar disk with this chakra event. So that was nice. Of course, in literature you will find many stories of Sudarshan Chakra, but this is one of the story. And yeah, go ahead. Aditya, I just wanted, before you move on to this, I wanted to say how profound this is. Um, there's many things that you've said that have just been amazing. I, but this one specifically, I just didn't want you to move on before we acknowledge the fact that the Ahir Bundya Samhita, mm -hmm. which is all about the Sudarshana Chakra, uh, is the star opposing, which is Uttara Bhadrapada. Oh, yeah, yeah. So these yeah. two guys are, these two stars, are, they're doing their dance. They're, they're looking across. So that's very fascinating that you connected that because this is also that Kshatriya energy. Got it. It comes yeah. through this, this sign as well, the, the mastery of divine weapons. And if you think about it, it's very fascinating because who should wield a weapon? Exactly. A responsible person. You see that Jupiter, Saturn, Sun, Mercury, yeah. no Mars there. <laughs> like no Mars, no Venus there, no moon, no moon, no moon. 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 <laughs> you know, it's yeah. all the very, um, all the very like Mercury and Jupiter actually form. You know, like the a lot of the intelligence yogas yeah, yeah of this course. is so this is someone intelligent the sun okay. is highest intelligence saturn is that discipline there's a martial <laughs> discipline but there's also the saturnian discipline. Discipline. exactly the ability to be tolerant to be patient True. to not respond immediately so i i found as you were talking mm -hmm. this is really profound and even the fourth pada i've seen to be very specific with this nakshatra Oh, yeah. Even though, even though the first one tends to be the, the hold the most fire, first pada, that fourth pada, that moksha pada, yeah. um, is really powerful for this nakshatra, and I think it's for that reason. But anyways, this is all beautiful. Meena, I just wanted to share that. No, that's fine. It's a meena rashi, correct? Meena pada. It's a moksha rashi. Natural twelve exactly. involved in that. And then the Sudarshana chakra. How you're explaining that whole connection there with the Uttra Bhadra pada and Uttra Falguni. And it's interesting because those two are the pairs. That's the cow and the bull. Yeah. So it's it's that whole connection. So okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank thanks, you. thanks, thanks, Ibji. Thanks for pointing pointing that. And it's another interesting thing that um, you can observe with Uttar Falguni is it's only two nakshatras which have from a Vimshotri Dasha perspective. You know, if the ruler of the nakshatra is a particular graha. 
they fall in their own house. There are only two nakshatras. One is Uttara Falcony first father, because it's ruled by sun and it falls in Leo. Another one is Kuru Bhadrapada fourth father, because it is ruled by Jupiter and it falls in uh, Pisces. And this is actually what uh, Devi Sundaramji pointed out to me. Say, say that you study these two nakshatras because the fourth father of Kuru Bhadrapada and first father, because they have enormous energy of sun and jupiter in them so the fourth father of Kuru Bhadrapada he says will get a lot of jupiter in qualities and the first father unless Yuji or anybody else you know Bharat or Santip or Aditya have to point out I feel that many politicians or leaders statesmen might have some planet in the first father of uh, Uttara Kalbani this is just my observation I don't know if there is anything people want to share i've actually seen all padas for it if i had to be honest like the virgo you can't overlook for that kind of dipl diplomatic wanting everyone to get along wanting to solve the problems you know um wanting to be that uh to restore the innocence to the atmosphere like you'll see that in aura i think it's aura sara might be um jataka uh jataka Parjat. Um, one of them says that this nakshatra is excellent. Oh, it's Mahorta Chintamani, actually. It says that this nakshatra is when you should um, make peace. This is good for sowing the seeds of peace. Contracts, the contracts that you want to, to stay as permanent, you know, because it's a stira nakshatra. It's, it's firm, it's solid, it's fixed through, right? So um, you want things that will stay and be permanent and also to make peace, unions. But, so that's a beautiful observation, Dr. Arjun Paiji, and I've seen that through all the padas, actually. Um, and then the thing about Purvabhadrapada that you mentioned is so, so interesting, that fourth pada is so interesting you brought that forward because in many of the dashas, Ashtotri Dasha, you know, the Sodashotri Dasha, uh, Jupiter is the one that activates Purva Bhadrapada. So that nakshatra does carry a lot of the energy of Jupiter himself. So I just wanted to share those two things before we moved on. Thank you. That's very fascinating, Yuji. Thanks for sharing that with us. So Aditya, I think you should, yeah, you should carry on. So, uh, yeah, so... And this was again mentioned by uh, the previous party uh, by Eve G and other Bharatram G and others. Lot of nakshatra is again male bull. So, you know, field work. What does male bull do? Feeding, nourishment. Of course, it's, uh, it's like connection with Purvashara, the cosmic web of water life sustenance. So, uh, the ruler god is also, you know, Aryama, what is a sun god, providing warmth, providing, you know, sustaining life fertility strength and also wealth because what do you do when you grow crops you basically why you grow crops to earn wealth to earn money to earn stability and in income so again all those things you can I, I i can say much about the connection between purvashara but that will itself will take a long time so i won't go much into that uh, so basically the connection with yeah, Purvashada was basically you said that uh, I think you are implying that when you make uh, Vishaka Nakshatra as the yeah brain, yeah but I won't talk then, now uh, yeah then it either both uh, the opposite Nakshatra if you go from it's from beginning from Kritika if you begin from Vishaka Nakshatra it becomes uh, Purvashada is connected with uh, um, Uttarafal that's what you are talking but that is like right. need to explain so I would like to right. wrap up soon <laughs> so. Right. So there's something that I wanted to add, Aditya. It's beautiful that you're talking about the, the bull. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a question that uh, somebody asked me. Do you know the difference between a bull and an ox? One because, is fertile, one is... Exactly. We have to understand that. Why? Because when you talk about Rohini Nakshatra, we're talking about the ox, which actually is used to uh, transport the, the produce of the land of Mother Earth, which is, you know, um, crops, right? The ox is used. You can never use a bull because bull apparently is the fertile, you know, um, one, and the uh, the ox is the castrated bull. So the ox is usually used on the fields for plowing the field. It's not the bull, and bull 
is nothing but signifying Shiva because it shows the bull shows fertility, masculinity, and it also shows the wilderness or the wildness of the masculine energy. That's Shiva because he leaves and uh, Nandi is in the, uh, you know, is just an epitome of Shiva. He just shows his wildness and that's why he rides the bull, Shiva. That shows the masculinity. And that's why you see this nakshatra is very strongly, as Inji mentioned, it, you know, about all the James Bonds, you know, the prominent ones have this nakshatra. So that is very, very key for uh, Uttara Parvati. So please understand the difference between an ox and a bull. And this is the bull. This is wild. But you cannot tame it. The ox is tamed. And that's why you use them for plowing the fields, uh, you know, transporting, uh, you know, the produce of earth. But this is not, you cannot use this, you cannot tame this. This is live energy. Yes, Dr. Arjun Paiji, I was just going to add to that. It's very fascinating on that point because you know, in the Kala Purush or the Nakshatra Purush, then you have Uttara and Purva Falguni in some sources being the sex organs, the reproductive organs, right? Very fascinating. I just related this possibly even to testosterone imbalances. See medical astrology. So that, um, you know, either abundance of fertility, which is Porva and Uttara Falguni, because I think abundance might even be more of an appropriate word than wealth sometimes, because these people are very abundant somehow. It doesn't always manifest as money, but there's some abundant quality to them, affectionate, very loving in some way, even if they're not touching to be affectionate. They tend to have a circle of people or they're, they're very good at that. Um, they're just abundant with their energy. And so it's just fascinating, um, Aditya G, that you brought up the whole thing with the reproductive because that is in the Nakshatra Purush. And, and then Dr. Arjun Paiji is talking about the bull. And that's, mm. that's the masculine. That's the, uh, you know, I would say Purva Falguni may be the feminine in that sense, and Uttara being the masculine, so possibly for medical astrologers, they could look at that for testosterone balances even. Exactly. So this is what I was pointing when I was pointing to this lion region. It's been the back region in the tail. See, this lion is imagined to be sitting. So this is yes. why head is here and it's like the back region is here, the tail region is here. So you can associate all those back region and the sexual organ regions and all. So it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's so, so uh, it's interesting. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Sandeep. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's also interesting that the lion's tail is also falling upon Mula, right? Mula is also has a similar right. tail. So it's such that the lion is there and the tail is upon uh, at Mula's end, which is like the pair of uh, Shiva. So it was an interesting point. And and you know, first first father of Uttara Falguni is Mula. Like exactly. <laughs> right. And that's very interesting that EG and you people brought this thing about uh, the private uh, organs of people. But there's another body part which is connected to uh, the Falgunis, especially they say, one text I've seen, they say it's connected to the lips. So it might be that, you know, if uh, women have a prominent planet there, they could have very prominent lips, very, very striking, very, you know, uh, very, I don't know, very prominent, you know, which can actually be as uh, easy unless you wanted to add something to that. No, Dr. Arjun Paiji, I think that's, I think there is something very specific about their face in general. They're usually very, something very beautiful about them. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And lips, I have seen that Porva, or one of them is the upper lip and one of them is the lower lip. Yes. Lower lip. I believe Uttra is lower. Yes. And Porva is upper lip. So yeah, that's fascinating. They, they should give some interesting shape to the mouth. The mouth. And also, some of them also have connected it to the right hand and the left hand. They say, you know, sides of the body, body. and to the hands. Yes. And that's why yes. you have to look at all these Purva and Uttara as, you know, uh, even the brain. It could be the brain, it could be the left part, part and the right part of the body. So, anyway. I and that brings this... us to hormones, right? Yes. The major production is there. You know, yeah. I'm thinking of all the fertility references. Porva Falguni, for sure. I mean, that's a really, really uh, a sign that is focused on reproduction in many cases. <laughs> you know, not in everyone, not in people that are focused in a different way. But even then, you think about it, still focus on love somehow. Whether it's uniting with the guru, whether it's uniting with, with the Lord, whether it's uniting with Lord Shiva, it doesn't... 
whatever, those two nakshatras want to unite. So that's the hormonal balance in the body is all about that reproduction. I mean, you think about the different stages in life of a woman and how she comes into her fertility and how she leaves her fertility. And so these two nakshatras must have some psych cyclic um, effect on the body. It's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And uh, this is something that I've read, you know, uh, the ancients actually believe that uh, the part of this where you have the pituitary and the pe pineal glands and the third eye region, they say that's where your energy centers for your fertility also lies. And that is the connection that make, yeah, this, this connection. And they call it, the ancients called it the Indra Yoni, the connection, the bridge which is formed between the pituitary and the pineal gland. And the shape of it, they used to depict it by the symbol of the two fish of the Pisces, you know, going, that's like an eye. And that is nothing but uh, the Devi, the, the, the deity, Devi, uh, Devi who is connected to that is uh, Meenakshi. Meen means, uh, you know, um, shape fish. of, yeah. Meenakshi means who looks, who has eyes of the shape of a fish. So Meenakshi Devi of Madurai, okay, she is connected to that and she actually is the activation center here. They call it the Indra Yoni. And that's depicted by the two fish, which is, again, we talk about uh, spiritual liberation is Pisces, the two fish. But it's similar to the third eye, depiction of the third eye, which is nothing but Meenakshi. Right? And that's where you see this, you know, uh, diagonally opposite to, uh, you know, Uttara Falguni is where you have the Uttara Bhadra for that. And the Devi, I think the energy of Devi is a very, very profound in, uh, along this axis. It's Vargo, correct? Vargo again. Vargo. Exactly. Wow. Yes. Beautiful. And the fourth pada, which I've found to be very prominent somehow. Planets that fall there are very tend to be something about them. Yeah, because they go into a Pisces Navamsha. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Aditya, please. Yeah, I think we can go ahead. So again, I was, this is just wealth obtained from partners, family or through marriage, you know, contract. Marriage is also a contract. So, okay. So now the next thing is always about festivals, you know, festival I like. So looking at the theme of the festivals, I would like to connect with the, the nakshatra energy. So Uttara Falguni is when, when, the, when the sun transits Uttara Falguni is like every year between 12 September to 26 September. That is the time when the sun transits Uttara Falguni Nakshatra. And if I ask what festivals are celebrated, and in India people will agree, that's the time of Ganesh Chaturthi, you know, Ganesha. So animal connection is elephant, because Uttara Falguni animal is connected to, uh, I think again, elephant, correct? Because in Briyat Samhita it is given. In Briyat Samhita, the animal connection is given as elephant for this Nakshatra. Elephant and the Festival which we celebrate, uh, which we celebrate during this time period, is also elephant, elephant headed. Our our favorite Lord Ganesh. So that's a direct connection between uh, the festivals which we celebrate and the theme. And the other thing is also there was another about uh, Pitru Paksha days also comes. You know that after the after Ganesh Chaturthi, Ganesh Chaturthi, then there's Chaturdashi after 14 days. And then comes the Purnima, and after that comes the uh, Pitru Paksha, where you give Tarpanam to your uh, uh, Pitrus, Pitris. And uh, now that trip, so it's it's the time when the sun transits this nakshatra. You also have Pitru Paksha. Now, what what you do for Pitris? Pitris is our ancestors, and we know the story of Amavasu, or the Pitris. Uh, he was like um, uh, the ancestor which was there. I think uh, Dasyu, correct? The Doctor Pai, the story of uh, uh, Amavasu. Who, uh, yeah, Achin, uh, Achida, Achinda, I think that's the name of uh, the daughter of Amavasu, okay, who, who is a, a celestial nymph who f fell from the uh, heaven because she wanted to marry an ancestor, a Pitri. And let me also remind you, Aryaman is supposed to be considered some, as per some texts as the king of the ancestors. King of the ancestors. So yeah. you see, the Aryaman is considered king of ancestors, and we have uh, we, we we give our offerings, we give our Tarpanam to ancestors exactly when the sun transits. Because there is a difference, you know, Yama is called the Lord of Ancestors and uh, Aryaman, uh, Aryama or Aryaman is called as uh, the King of Ancestors as per some texts. Okay, okay. 
So it's interesting to see how Pitru Paksha days exactly matches when the sun transits uh, Uttara, Uttara Falmi Nakshatra. And so that's, I think this is my last slide, which again, I would like to put all the uh, Nakshatra's, uh, I think, summary of what we learned. So it's again, a lot of animal Chinese Shakti. So there is also a lot of wealth connected with this. So I think, yeah, so the word again to remember Uttara Falguni is like post meritorious fruits will be obtained by the native and a lot of wealth related issues, contracts, agreements to be remembered when you hear about Uttara Falguni, just maybe in a line. I think Another thing I wanted to add, Aditya, with this beautiful uh, discussion that you've had is Uttara, the word Uttara has many meanings. Uttara also means, uh, you know, uh, very important or preeminent. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you can say Uttara is also the north. You can say Uttara Bharat. Uttar. Yeah. Uttar means north. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, Uttarayan. Everything Uttar. So it means the chief. It means that. And the, the deity also, if you see Arya, Aryama, Arya, the Sanskrit word means chief or somebody who is very, very prominent. You know, in olden times, somebody who was a very well learned and well versed uh, master or a uh, uh, a, a priest or somebody who is always called Arya. You know, Arya is somebody who is a lot of people used to give a lot of respect. So I feel that, you know, Uttara Falguni as such, because of their merit in the fruits, they are given a lot of uh, respect in the society. They can get a lot of respect and recognition for their deeds that they do. You know, uh, anything that they do, they get a lot of recognition because they're Arya. Arya means the chief, uh, the, the eminent personality, a very established and very respectable person. It's very good that you pointed that out, Dr. Pai, Uttara North. Now, if you see the symbol, uh, you see the dates of this Nakshatra, 26th September. What happens on 22nd September? 22nd September is an equinoctial day. So what happens is like after 22nd September, the sun goes south. It leaves the northern hemisphere and it's like in the slowly going into the southern hemisphere. So I think maybe it is something like the saying final goodbye to northern hemisphere, maybe something connected with north. When you just said Uttar, north, I just remembered that during this time the sun goes in the northern direction. Beautiful. Point, Aditya. Fantastic. I love this uh, discussion thoroughly. Great discussion. So, okay, let's go to Eveji. Eveji. I have a small uh, point yes, 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 from yes, yes, uh, yes, Dr. Togi's uh, slides that yes. is, he talked about, the, did you talk about the bed, Dr. Togi? I think in the first few slides, you talked about the legs of the bed. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the legs of the bed. Uh, you see, there is a very interesting story about the bed that uh, when the Mahabharat battle was about to start, both Duryodhan and Arjun decided to approach Krishna for favors in the battlefield. So Duryodhan and Krishna decided to go and meet Krishna. I think Krishna was in Dwaraka perhaps at that time. So they decided to go there and meet him. Duryodhan reached Krishna's palace a few minutes before Arjun. And Duryodhan found that Krishna was sleeping on his bed. So quietly he went inside the room and sat at the head of Krishna's bed, waiting for Krishna to wake up. And then a few minutes later, Arjun reached the place and Arjun saw Duryodhan sitting on the, head, on the head of the bed. So Arjun quietly took his place at the foot of the bed, that is near the hind legs of the bed. And yes. both of them waited for Arjun to wake up. And sorry, both of them waited for Krishna to wake up. And when Krishna woke up, the first, when Krishna woke up, he first saw Arjun because Arjun was sitting near his feet. So he said, hey, Arjun, what are you doing here? So Arjun said, I've come to ask you for a favor. But Duryodhan said, hey, Krishna, but I came first. And then Krishna turned his head. He said, oh, Duryodhan, you're also here. Because Duryodhan was sitting next to his uh, ears. <laughs> so both of them said, I need to ask the favor first. But Krishna said, no, uh, only Arjun can ask me the favor first because I saw Arjun. But Duryodhan said, no, but I came here first. But Krishna said, sorry, but I saw him first. I don't know when you all came, but I saw Arjun sitting at my foot first. So I think Arjun must ask the favor first. So Arjun said, Krishna, I want you to be my charioter. Krishna said, fine, I'll be your charioter in the battle. And Duryodhan said, great. He asked you 
asked you to be his chariot and I actually came to ask you for the support of your army. So your army must fight for the Kauravas. Krishna said, sure, take my army. And Krishna was able to please both Duryodhan and Arjun by giving away Duryodhan, his army. And to Arjun, uh, he gave his own services for the uh, battle of Mahabharata. So the takeaway from this story is as a Uttra Falguni native, you could be yourself quite powerful, but you need to sit at the feet of your Aryaman to get your job done. I think that is the takeaway from this story. Great point. Great point. No, it was absolutely great point. Point. I think yeah, great point about uh, yeah. Yeah, asking for the I think he asked for the Narayan Narayani Sena. That is what the Sena of or the army of uh, Krishna was. And it's very beautiful that these two nakshatras and you're pointing out the hind legs of the bed and then you're if you look at the opposite you see Uttara Bhadrapada which is connected to Lakshmi you know Uttara Bhadrapada and she's always at the feet of her lord she's always there at the feet and here also you see Arjun was sitting at the feet of uh, you know uh, his godfather or rather you can say Krishna you know beautiful connections thank you Bharat beautiful it's it's very nice like if you put if you put say say krishna which is shravana nakshatra which is vishnu in the lagna uttra falguni will be coming in uh, ninth house so arjun in ninth krishna in uh, maybe first house and then you get uh, which you were talking about ox rohini and all those which will be in the fifth house so nadi nakshatra again you can connect this rohini with shravana and again with uttra falguni too so all the three it's, it's very interesting that you, you brought up about Shravana Nakshatra, which is connected to Vishnu or, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nautar of, uh, I mean, you can say Krishna, the Godhead. So the ninth house from where Krishna is, if you make uh, Shravana the, the Lagna, the blessings of Vishnu is going to the ninth house, which is going yeah. to Arjun. And okay. if you make uh, Uttara Falguni or the, you know, Uttara Falguni as the Lagna in Virgo, in the Virgo, then the guru of Arjun becomes Krishna, whose birth sign is uh, Rohini, Rohini, which falls in the ninth. Exactly. Yes. Fantastic. So it's like, you know, they are getting the blessings and his guru is also can be seen from this. Uh, I mean, I'm just talking in very general. Gen yeah. yeah. Uh, one, one to point out with that story, uh, Bharadramji, is that, uh, you know, um, Duryodhan was sitting at the front legs of the bed. So it was like, and then uh, Arjuna was sitting at the hind legs of the bed or the back legs of the bed, which is uh, Uttara Falguni. So if you make uh, Pura Falguni as ascendant, what he requested of, uh, you know, uh, Krishna was uh, basically a lot of servants, like a large number of servants. So the sign is actually opposite to Pura Falguni. So you can see how that opposite axis, you know, like... Uh, how for Arjuna, it was like the Uttara Falguni and the Uttara Bhadrapada or like Lakshmi, the feet of the Lord that was being triggered. And, but for Duryodhan, it was uh, the Pura Falguni and uh, Aquarius. Aquarius is also the Multrakon Rashi of Saturn, which is basically a bunch of servants, large, large groups of people, uh, you know, large bunch of army, which was, which was exactly what Duryodhan asked for too. So that was an interesting uh, connection there for sure. That was very interesting. Sankripji, also, you know, you just, when you said that, I just realized also as well with Bhaga, right? With Porva Valguni, he wants the best share among the gods. Right. <laughs> so he asked for the largest share. He asked Beautiful. for the biggest. Yeah. That's I think our discussions have gone now very different, Dr. Yeah. Like, like I think there. this is, if you, I think this is the level of discussions I really want. I mean, that's why I get the panel. I'm getting so many because rather than just me sitting and doing a video, it makes so much of, we learn so much from these interactive sessions we do. And I hope, you know, the viewers are also going to benefit from this sort of discussion. And there would be so many thoughts which might come in from these viewers as well, you know, and they can share and they can add on this uh, sort of discussion we're doing. I think this is brilliant. I really love this dialogue that we are having. No, I will say, Dr. Pai, when you say viewers, it was nice, like when we did for KRS channel on uh, Pai Paddhati, there were like many good comments from viewers and they have recommended few books and all. So that was really very helpful and I'm trying to get it. So sometimes viewers can teach us too. So I absolutely, absolutely essential. So, I think they, uh, I mean, you learn from 
your clients if you are practicing Jyotish professionally, and that's why you have to honor your clients. And second, you learn from discussions and gurus. Everybody is a guru because we learn from everybody. Okay, people who are viewing us also are our gurus because they are going to tell us, you know, what is working. When when you give us good comments, you know, they say, oh, this is working here. Or if it doesn't work, also that also teaches us. We need both factions to come and. You know that's how we progress that's how it's not about uh, saying that you know i am right or you're right everybody is right everybody has a viewpoint and we want to honor uh, and we want to learn collectively it's a collective again if that's an astrological point dr pai mentioned fifth house is your students you know and what is fifth house ninth from ninth guru of guru is your shishya <laughs> so it's like again connecting so you are yeah, some of them also take six thousand i guess i don't know uh, sandeep Bharat and EJ, do you have? Uh, I don't know, who are the students? Uh, some I've heard I would uh, say six. <laughs> who, who, which is which the students? students? Well, different sources tend to take different planets for it as well. So I think we could look at that because some sources take Mercury, which would uh, make houses. Sense. If you talk about houses, yeah, most of them take the planet to re that I've read. Um, but but you can look at Briat or Shastra. I believe you have the fifth house. I'd have to relook at that. I'd have to relook at that. I, I might be wrong. I'm saying that I'd have to look at that again. But um, I believe. But I have found that in some cases you do need to look at Mercury and Venus. Those two brahas. I know that's a strange thing with Venus. I, I don't want to waste our time with it now. But that those two brahas. You'll oh, see. Venus is yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think uh, Mercury, I totally agree with you, UG, is because if you see uh, Mercury in the natural zodiac, in the Kalapurish Kundli, it rules the third house and the sixth house. Now, yes. in olden times, um, in the Gurukul system of learning, the students were considered sixth house because the students used to serve the Guru. They used to be like servants in the Gurukul. Seva. Because they seva. They used to go get the yes. firewood for the yagnas uh, they used to go and ensure that there's food that they get for you know cooking for the um, guru mata you know the wife of the guru so they used to literally be like uh, you know serving service is always seen from the sixth house and that's why students in olden times were seen from sixth house and as you said uh, sixth house is also ruled by mercury and third house is uh, you know uh, Third house, yeah. yeah third house is also uh, teammates, like people on our team, or people in our group, or people that um, we may lead that are in our group as well. So that makes all of those those connections make sense. Also, sixth house um, has to do with um, even military and like having a regiment. Yeah, yeah having regiment, a regiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that makes sense for the old systems of learning, for old sure. Systems, yeah. All right, Eve Ji, uh, I think unless anybody has any more questions or want to add something to Aditya's, I think we can move over to you and let's hear from you what you have to say about uh, this beautiful nakshatra Uttar Pabu. I've already said so much. <laughs> um, I, I first of all want to say, speaking of Uttar Falguni, it's very interesting and curious that we have Mr. Bharat Ramji here. Uh, he must have one of the Falgunis, I suspect. Um, and I have to say that he's an excellent addition. So speaking of speaking of people who complement us on our path, who are like-minded, who honor our soul's contract, I just wanna <laughs> I just wanna extend that because you, you've been an excellent addition for us. We've got the five fingers I mean, now. <laughs> remember, remember, Yvji, it is on Uttara Falguni day, his addition. Yes, exactly. He's addition today. It's kind of curious, but um, you know, um, we should put KP technique on Bharatramji itself. <laughs> <laughs> one of the Falgunis is happening, I think, <laughs> or maybe both. Okay, one is happening. <laughs> so, um, but um, but one of the things I just I I think I expressed a lot about what I see with this nakshatra. The one thing is, though, that um, when you're when you're looking at it for readings, you know, like when you're sitting with an Uttar Falguni person, one thing of there's two little interesting things when a person has like the Lord of their seventh there, 
Like that, you know, immediately you should look at that. It's a very significant thing. Lord of the ninth or Uttarafagoni in the ninth, you know, Grahas in the ninth. Very important to pay attention to because those are contractual, right? And I've seen, there's a saying, I think, in Orasara. I'm not sure, like, please, you know, viewers be patient with my fact that I have so many books strewn everywhere and I can't remember at the moment where things are. But, um, but there's there's a saying that the person will be greatly loved by their spouse. They'll be greatly, and it doesn't say if a malefic's there, this changes. It doesn't say anything like that. As a matter of fact, when I've given readings to specifically men with this, because there's that whole masculine, honoring the masculine in this line, um, I have seen men that have either their Lord of their seventh or something relationship oriented, even Venus, that have a very devoted wife, or they're very devoted to their path, their guru. Their, I mean, uh, the founder of the Hare Krishna movement, his Venus there. Um, this is a very, this sign is capable of being Nandi. The sign is capable of being very devoted. Um, and that's some of where the abundance and the wealth comes from. And I don't, I want to bring up the subject of knowledge here because we haven't tapped that. This sign is very knowledgeable. You'll see astrologers. You will see uh, people who deal in uh, poets, um, writers, many writers, people that are excellent writers, um, people that are that that make depending on which graha is there, right? You have a Mercury there. It's going to be very different than having Venus there. And actually, I haven't seen Venus do bad here. I know everyone says, "Oh, debilitated in Virgo." I, I have seen so many charts where I would be wrong if, if I had said there was going to be bad results from that Venus. And I have always related it back to Uttar Falguni because there's, I've looked, checked it from so many angles because this sign's agenda supports the nature of Venus, right? So there's something, so people, those of you with it that are thinking of a debilitated Venus, I would ask you to question it. And look at what else is going on that might be affecting that Venus, like what company or whatever. But when it's just a beautiful Venus there, I mean, there's a lot of things, that, positive things that tend to happen, including devotion. I will, but the, the scribe side of this. I would like to add a point uh, yeah. when you said that, because in, if you see the yoga tara of Uttara Falguni that happens at 29 degree, I think 29 degree or 28 degree of Leo, and it's in the first pada of Uttara Falguni. So, and the next is basically Hasta, which is 15 degree of uh, Virgo. So in Uttara Falguni, in, especially in Virgo Rashi, you won't have Yoga Tara. So probably what you're saying that Venus is not- No, this is that. Virgo Rashi. This is Virgo Rashi. I've seen it. I've seen it too much. As a matter of yeah. fact- so In part oh, of Virgo Tara. Rashi of Uttara Falguni, there is not much Yoga Tara. So it's not that- Venus will give really bad, which you are correct in saying. Oh, I see. Yes, I've noticed this. As a matter of fact, it's almost as if Venus becomes right. a power. And I know, I know a native who had, she had Uttara Falguni in first pada, and as now I remember because I remember when we're talking, family is like a big, uh, wealthy family and a big, uh, like they have their say in the society. Like yes. A, has that say in the society. Exactly. I've seen this with Virgo too, the Virgo, the, the Virgo side of it. You know, that's, it's, I've seen these people, they can come from great wealth. Now they're not always wealthy people. This is a tricky thing. There's something very specific about their education too. It's another thing I've noticed. They learn about human nature a lot of times through their education. They may become leaders. When they're, edu when they're in their education, they may become leaders of their peers somehow, either, either put in that position. I've just seen this a lot. But there's something very odd about their education typically that stands out to me when they start talking about their life experience. And, um, and they really do bring this kind of um, – this diplomatic sense to the equation, I've, even if they're firm about it, even if they're firm, even if they have something very solid to say, it's not as offensive as if someone else was to say it. If one of the other signs were to say, let's say if um, Vishaka says it, <laughs> you know, sometimes a person operating out, they can, they can be like very, you know, I'm going to throw the thunderbolt at you, but Uttara Falguni has this way of like steadily approaching something and it can be very fierce. It can have that side, but it still can carry, um, 
this diplomacy where people will listen to it in a different way and will not be as offended. Um, but there's something specific about the education. There's something specific about partnership, always abundance, um, and the person's way they handle money. The way they handle money is going to be very, the way they distribute wealth, they'll either be very charitable and generous, or they'll be very concerned with their finances. There's so, always something with the way they handle their wealth. So I just wanted to talk about those little things so people with it could kind of relate it to their chart. But, um, but you know, if you read a lot of the classics, this sign has many blessings with women, <laughs> Like having many wives or having being very attractive to the women, um, have being blessed with a devoted wife. It has many um, blessings in leadership. It tends to have blessings in wealth. Um, it tends to have blessings in being unconquerable. It's another thing you don't hear about this, that the enemies of these people kind of fall wayside. So, um, and, and that I think also might be in Horasara and a few other ones where um, the enemies will be uh, silent. They will somehow fall to the back. It's not that they vanquish the enemies. It's just that the enemies slowly, it doesn't say that, you know, some, sometimes it'll define whether um, a sign will destroy the enemy. <laughs> you know, the Ashlesha is all about Vishashlesha Shakti. That's going to destroy a person, you know, but Uttra Falguni is more about the, the, Enemies could possibly even become friends in the end. Deepji, I wonder, is this because of, uh, you know, all the Uttara nakshatras, they are all fixed nakshatras. So, you know, you see this, yeah, you see the themes of them are Uttara, Uttara Shada is about victory, ultimate victory. And uh, Uttara Falguri, you're mentioning the same thing, you know, the same thing. You yes, and it says, it says that they will be... Yes, it doesn't say they'll be victorious, though. That's very specific to Uttarashada about the victory. But it does say that their enemies will be quiet or peaceful or subdued. So there's some kind of enemy victory over enemies. And you can see in the life of Arjun, he, you know, of course, Karn, you know, Karn had a, a major, major, major opposition towards him. But, um, but everyone had to acknowledge his greatness. You, you couldn't, you, you could, you just had to acknowledge it. There was something about it that it was undeniable that this, this person is a great person. Even the enemies must admit that. So it's, it's fascinating. Yes. Yeah, so I, that's all I have to say. I've been running my mouth enough <laughs> through, through every, cause everyone's been inspiring. <laughs> because the nakshatra Lord is, Sun and uh, if you take Navamsha Lord for second and third Pada, it is Saturn. So I think Sun and Saturn. So you need you see the enmity. You know? Yeah. So that's what I think. Sun and Saturn, especially maybe it may be prominent in second and third Pada. Yeah, opposites and mm -hmm. and the reconciliation of of opposites and I could see how Uttarafaguni people also um, do attract enemies at times in their life as well to learn. Certain because an Uttarafaguni person is supposed to be learning about the human condition. They're, the Porva and Uttarafaguni, they're supposed to be learning about the human condition. Even, even thinking of sexuality, sexuality is a major part of the human condition. It's how we propagate, it's how we continue the species. And, um, you know, you notice these people, they're very relatable. Um, you know, there's, there's so many, also master of arts. Both of them are said to be masters at art to have qualities of artistic talents. So, and that's a very human condition type thing, the, the keeping up the culture, the, yeah, making partnerships, keeping up the culture, being the go-between, you know, establishing firm, firm relations. And affection shouldn't be left out here too. Really, the sign is very affectionate. That, I mean, across the board, even malefics there, there's usually something very affectionate about the person. So. It's very interesting, Yuji, uh, that you mentioned about uh, the James Bond. Uh, James Bond. <laughs> yes. And you see the typical character of James Bond. It's about, you know, his relationship with multiple women, uh, you know, double, <laughs> double agents. Uh, you right. know, the kind of, it's all kind of seems like even even the, the people that he has enmity, it's 
sometimes when you look at uh, James O'Neill, they admire him. They, they admire, him. admire him. They admire him. <laughs> And, and you mentioned about you know having many women in their lives, and you can see that there was James Bond. I think just take the character of James Bond. I think you'll understand. Uh, uh, <laughs> Luther Falguni. Luther Falguni. It thinks of itself. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, also, also, uh, also, James Bond actor. You know the M character M, Madam M, was his. Mentor, so like uh, it's also an important theme for Uttar Pradesh mentors. Oh, the being mentors. a mentor, and I love that Bharat Ramji brought that forward. Bharat Ramji, that's so significant. Uttar Pradesh people, especially when it's well, you know, attributed. And I'm not saying that it can't have a malefic. We we often look at these malefics and like shudder, and actually they're really good. <laughs> they give us strength. Malefics malefics give us strength. We need strength. Life is hard. Anyone who says life is easy is crazy. <laughs> I'm, I wonder if they actually can feel, you know, um, but, um, but you know. life is easy. Come on. <laughs> well, maybe for you, Nithyaji. No, no. I don't want to say life is easy. <laughs> for some reason, when you say life. it. I yeah, li life is easy when you, you know, you can munch something behind, you know, <laughs> us and then you feel good about it. I think life, yeah, see, look, we knew it. He knew that he's up to something, and that's why he's saying life is easy. No, it's is like already twelve. I don't know twelve midnight, and not have my food, <laughs> <laughs> so I have to eat something. But Bharat Ramji bringing forth the the mentors. God, that is such an important thing for Uttar Pradesh. They really do. One of the things, Bharat Ramji, why that's so significant. Um, I don't remember if it's in Prashnamarga, but in one of the texts it actually mentions that uh, Uttar Pradesh people are grateful and respectful. So when you think about when you actually think about, they can actually be too modest. This is where you get the good guy that is too good, too. You know, just like too good. Like Dr. <laughs> right? Life is never hard. <laughs> never, no, never no, 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 no. <laughs> I had continuous meetings even just before that. <laughs> right. <No time> to... <laughs> but yeah, this is it's said to be a very, ris I think we've lost Bar Ramji, but. Um, really, it's it is. It's said to be a grateful and respectful nakshatra. So that makes a lot of sense with the mentors, and I've seen that. And that might even be why this is a very specific nakshatra for education. And I've known people who have run this dasha, um, like run dasha of Uttarfaguni in the ninth house, let's say, and met their guru or met their mentor. So this whole Nandi connection, and um, and also women meeting their spouse, things like that. You know, when they have a graha there and they run the period of it because this is, it gives that fruit, right? I'm not saying it's always easy. I mean, only for a Dityaji. No. <laughs> he's, he's the most eligible James Bond that we have here today. One of the most eligible James Bond. Exactly. Uh, zero, zero, seven. One more. <laughs> James, Bond was a, James Bond was a solo character. Like, he was only, I don't know. He was like one, one. He has like he has associates, he but he's a solo hero. Yes. No, but because why I'm saying is if you see the star <laughs> of Uttara Falguni, Denebola, it's like one star. So that's why I'm connecting. Hero, the golden one, you know. Yeah. So that's why I'm connecting with the <laughs> astronomy aspects. Yes. Yeah. That's actually really interesting. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Eve This was fascinating. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to our... Uh, he's last, but he's always last, but he's not the least. He's the best that we have. So we reserve the best for the last. And that's uh, Dr. Kanol Sandeep Krishna. So what about the starting then? <laughs> <laughs> because when, when he starts, he never ends. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think right. honestly, we, he's got yeah. some very fascinating uh, insights, very, very profound. So, Santip, I think you, you should uh, go ahead and enlighten us with uh, Uttara Palguni. Yeah, uh, Dr. Pai, uh, you know, I mean, so many great points were raised about Uttara Palguni. You know, uh, I don't know what really to add, but uh, some things I will just add uh, which we missing. Sort of like uh, we just briefly hinted at it. I'll just like solidify those points. So one of the first things is that the symbol of Uttarapalguni is bed. 
So again, we discussed about contracts, unions, Aryaman being the god of contracts, the god of like, unions. Also, like, um, what is really interesting is that uh, many times these natives will be very much interested uh, in contracts and unions in general. They'll be like, as you mentioned, they'll be the best friends who are the ones who are always attending all the weddings. They'll be the one, they'll be the HR representatives dealing with agreements. They'll be the work, uh, social worker who's always dealing with applications and paperwork. Um, and also many times, uh, especially the Virgo Padas, these natives would be writing a lot. They would, take, they would be writing journals a lot. These are the regular journals, they will be accounts a lot. I mean, that itself is a gift, keeping accounts, you know, keeping your accounts, everything in order, that itself is a gift. And uh, these natives are very good at that. These natives are also very good at uh, talking with other person. That, that was very beautiful what EFG brought about, like understanding the human condition. And uh, one of the sim uh, simplest things um, that can be seen, uh, which I was read in Prashri with this, but uh, Uttar Falguni is a nakshatra connecting the fifth house and sixth house. So there is this connection of service house, which is sixth house, and fifth house is um, children's. You know, so there's a natural connection to children and uh, child services, natural connection to even volunteering organization with regard to children, many connection with orphanages, many connection with NGOs, which UG mentioned, volunteering uh, opportunities, uh, just being charitable in general. And uh, Aditya uh, showed how uh, Uttarakhand star of patronage. So many times they are like the patrons, you know, patrons of the society. Teals play out very well, especially in the access of Uttarabhadra Pada and uh, Uttarafalguni, that they will kind of sponsor other people. They will be the patrons who sponsor art, for instance. The ancient families that are sponsoring artists to create arts. Like, you know, the, um, and uh, they will be, uh, what, what is very interesting about uh, Uttarafalguni is that um, uh, they can be very ex, you know. <laughs> they will be the one who will be saying, Think it was the worst year, you know, they'll be like very harsh critic and sometimes these natives really have to, the only way they know how to communicate is to criticism. The other person may not understand it, but it's like they don't get peace of mind unless they critique something <laughs> and they do, they come out, you know, that's just how they are. Because that's how their Mercury attention to details come out. Um, one interesting thing was that about, uh, we, we talked a lot about Bull, uh, uh, Bull was great. One connection is that, you know, they might be naturally fascinated with bullfighting, for instance. Be naturally fascinated with the, you know, uh, even they might be fascinated with fighting bulls in, in the sense that they might have, uh, even that they might be great so that the enemies should recognize them. But uh, on the other side, just by, uh, if you reverse the equation, it becomes like they might want to face great enemies themselves, you know. They might want to face a great bull themselves. There can be that kind of theme going on. Yeah. I don't want to support bullfighting. I just want to say that. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, sure. I have to say that. It's so it's cruel. And you've got an animal right. friend behind you right now to confirm right, right. that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but... Uh, you don't want to yeah, support that's... some Uthra man to get an idea to go kill a bull for no reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, explaining. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, thanks for uh, highlighting that. Uh, but uh, what I've seen is that... Uh, Sometimes these natives might go to Spain, you know, they might go to Spain where there is a lot of bullfighting. That's one thing I wanted to mention. So at, uh, one thing I want to mention. Uh, sometimes I've also seen that, uh, yeah, they might be attracted to farms where there are a lot of cows, there are a lot of uh, bulls, you know, things like that. Uh, and naturally, Virgo is the sixth house, so um, farming and things like that. Um, one, uh, so that was the point about bull actually. And again, uh, what we described, like, you know, how they have this uh, natural leadership uh, ability. So uh, I, I talked about this uh, in uh, Dr. Pai's Uttar Falguni video on his channel. But then uh, again, they might have also a Ganesh, you know, they might be the lead Ganas. But then uh, you might also be the leader amongst Ganas in a wedding, like the best friend, the bridesmaid, the best friend, you know, the best man. And uh, sometimes they might be very much involved in weddings in the leadership. and. Akshinakshi Amman Temple, I think in Mina, yeah, Madhuri Minakshi Amman Temple, there's a wedding of uh, Shiva and uh, Parvati, Minakshi Amman, that happens. And that's like an everyday evening ritual that happens, you know. So sometimes I've seen that in India, they might be pulled towards Minakshi Amman Temple. That has literally happened. Um, might literally be, even uh, they might be, some natives with Pura Falguni may attend only the wedding part. Shiva is processing, doing the procession of the wedding. But Uttara Falcon natives might actually wait until the wedding ends, you know. So that is one more thing. So these natives might be the natives who might uh, show up 
just at the end of the wedding just <laughs> have food and leave you know that's another thing as uh, and the thing is that um, let's see so ganesh yeah, uh, dr pai uh, you, you mentioned about indra yoni can you talk a little bit about that I, I, that was really yeah. fascinating point yeah uh, and uh, when you go to spiritual uh, astrology okay there is this normal astrology in spiritual astrology they talk about indra yoni indra yoni is supposed to be the bridge which is formed between your pineal and the pituitary gland okay right. that's the center of all your uh, glands i don't know what you call them endocrine glands is that correct endo endocrine right. glands of your body right. yeah so they control and your pituitary and your pineal are the main uh, things which controls the rest of your parts of the body and they say right. minakshi minakshi means the eye of a fish and if you see the, the spiritual astrologers speak about uh, this uh, the the pisces right the fish the symbol they right. say that's the third eye it's a symbol of the third eye actually which is the connection right. and that's why you see uh, in pisces is where your venus gets exalted right the lord of the path where you get you know complete uh, ultimate bliss you know ultimate uh, uh, knowledge is what you can get when you go into this state of uh, uh, i can't remember the word what it is called nirvikalpa i don't know there is there is a term right. in sanskrit which is used samadhi nirvikalpa samadhi right. yeah turiya. something turiya nirvikalpa samadhi right nirvikalpa samadhi is that right yeah or turiya other samadhi samadhi some kind of turiya okay right turiya means turiya ultimate consciousness okay. self realization self realization self actualization if people are following you know like mass laws uh, pyramid of hierarchy so when you have really right. come over all of these that's when you go to and that's what they call it indra yoni indra yoni right. and that's why you see he is called indra was called as sahastra yoni why was he called sahastra right exactly he had 1000 Uh, you know female reproductive organs which means his desire was so much that he had to control and lock all of these yonis to be able to become uh, a spiritual master he didn't have one yoni right which is uh, you know the and yeah. that's why he was a great i mean he had so many powers because imagine you just have one third eye imagine somebody who has thousand eyes on him is very very powerful that's why he was right. called as the king of all the gods because of his spiritual practices which gave him thousand yoni i think bharat ram ji right. wanted to say something uh, interesting uh, i just saw that he wanted to make a point bharat do you wanted to say something no okay no yeah. not now not now okay because i saw yeah. uh, what, what? yeah one thing that was interesting dr pai is that whenever you're talking whenever you talked all of that one thing that was really talking was what i felt was happening was that indra is also connection to rainbow because he is like the rain is the rainbow and there is this whole concept of rainbow body that's out there in tibetan buddhism you know there is this concept of like a rainbow body you develop your body you know that kind of theme this uh, one thing i've seen with uttara falguni especially especially the first father his natives might be connecting with the sun a lot like they might be sun gazing they might be connecting with the sun and they might be doing like uh, heavy like uh, tibetan buddhist kind of practices you know like uh, you know rainbow body practice for instance and uh, this is actually a, a very interesting thing because uh, many teams which you mentioned uh, um, i'm not sure like uh, i think uh, this uh, this yeah especially the it part you know like the mentorship part all of that also there is this whole area of like soul of uh, work you know solar kind of things you can do like sun gazing or like simply like uh, hanging out when the sun is setting and look sun and then absorbing you know like surya kriya yoga or something like that you know some kind of yoga that is connected to the sun where you are absorbing the prana from the sun or something like that you know some kind of solar practices i've seen with uttara falguni and this indra yoni is very fascinating because uh, leo being uh, that first pada uttara falguni is very special it is like both rashi and um uh, nakshatra lord is also like uh, sun it's also falling in the leo so there is a lot of clues of about solar work and sun that can happen here with uttara falguni and it's also like one big thing is that i've seen one remedies is to chant the gayatri mantra and we know how powerful gayatri mantra is 
like uh, people have literally reported weight loss by chanting you know half an hour of gayatri mantra just by chanting a mantra you are losing weight you know like uh, for a period of month or something like that and um, also uh, one great remedy is to connect with the for these natives yeah when we look at pai padati map will it will be clear but one great remedy i just want to mention connect like with the sun if any way that's possible even offering argya to the sun in during uh, sunrise within one hour of sunrise offering that is great remedy also like um, just feeling joyful with the sun you know being smiling at the sun you know simple things like that feeling thankful for the sun feeling thankful whenever the sunlight is coming up that's a great uh, partner for these natives to have literally the sun and uh, one thing with leo is that i always tell this native like you can all see this planet is uh, out there immediately like every day so when you just uh, connect immediately it's like you will you have that benefit of like really getting all those energies immediately with respect to that house or that planet immediately so that is one uh, out in the sun is very refreshing for these natives um yeah one other side with the religious part is that uh, dr pai you are right about political personalities i've seen that literally like planets here these natives might have like you know uh, yeah usually also mentioned that Uh, they might be involved in politics so sometimes they might be involved in connected with their religions like the bjp party for instance in india this is like a religious fundamental you know religious party kind of so uh, that is one thing i've seen and the aspect of that is like these natives and remember sixth house is also the natural sixth house of habits you know the natural house of habits so many times these natives with especially with the eye team the thousand eye team the sun team the light team these natives might become blind about their habits they might be blind about the rituals they are involved and so like for instance what is a ritual like it's a thing you do on a routine basis so for instance drinking at night that can be a modern day and these might these might be the natives who just because of the peer pressure they are go along with the crowd and they might be blind about the rituals they are involved in in that sense other thing is that um, um like you know uh, they know they might they might themselves might need to have a strong kind of ritual to feel stable or stability you know uh, for that to happen they might need a strong sense of ritual also the great theme about friendship was that um, their friends might act as mentor they definitely need a mentor in their lives themselves their stories themselves could be like mahabharat literally just like as i mentioned in uh, juna's um, portion in dr pai's video and um, let's see yeah uh, one last point was one last point before i went to the chart was that um, these these natives tend to form um, the, the relationship energy is so strong with these natives that the good side of this relationship is that they they one and they form business partnerships with their husbands or their wives like immediately these guys will have their wives as shopkeepers you know they like in the in the business they are running so this is a, a husband wife partnership can happen a lot with uh, falguni other thing i have seen with uttara falguni is that um, again with this husband wife partnership these natives love to be in a partnership so much that the worst side of this energy is that they might go into codependent relationships where they don't nourish themselves you know they just like they tend to forget their own needs and they just they just love being in a relationship to the point where they are about what is happening in the relation sixth puro falguni uh, energy uh, but uh, this is one thing and uh, also they these natives made a lot of gains through partnerships through marriage through relationships one is like uh, either they may get married to a wealthy person or they get married their luck completely changes other uh, thing is that um, they might get divorced and they might get a huge divorce settlement that is also something i'll see or like even if their spouse uh, dies they will get some kind of money from through their spouse this kind of uh, spouse money karma is clearly seen with two tarafs uh, but yeah one interest one thing that was coming was like these are the natural mr and mrs smiths of the world you know like mr like you have the you know uh, husband and wife pair running the uh, you know the show in that movie like uh, brad pitt and angelina jolie uh, that, that's one uh, easy reference there i've seen uh, i've seen this happen like the wife will be very supportive of the husband all the great relationship uh, qualities which uh, ug mentioned very supportive like um, but sometimes if you are malefic there then it becomes like uh, it becomes like your karma to develop that kind of support like to develop to deal with those kind of themes and to grow through those kind of themes to through relationships um yeah i think this is uh, what i had uh, upon uh, uttara falguni Can yeah. I just confirm some things yeah, before you move into yeah, the chart sure. quickly? Because a lot sure. of that was really profound, and right. I like the husband-wife partnership hands down. I have to give that to you. I've seen that so many times. That's a right. really, really good observation that we should have said. Um, I've seen that like numerous times actually, 
And um, the other thing is you were mentioning remedies just real quick before we get on to another subject, before you, you were mentioning the sun. Right. And um, one thing is to always stick to your commitments. When you have this star, when you want to strengthen this, this energy of the star, never interfere in another person's marriage or partnership. Do not backbite. Do not spread rumors. Do not break up a marriage. Right. Like that is this, this sign is very, it gets ruined by those things because you're dishonoring the energy of union. You're dishonoring the energy of partnership. So what's interesting is, is the sixth nakshatra, which is the sadhana nakshatra, which is an auspicious nakshatra for every nakshatra, right? The sixth from it is always auspicious, is oh, Anuradha. Wow. So we've got Mitra here, which is the great diplomat. Right. And, and speaking about honoring contracts, you know, so this is a really important thing for those people who have grahas and utrafalguni and want to strengthen or honor them, you know, or people who don't have grahas there that's still a very personal all the nakshatras are personal for everyone. And so if we don't want to spoil the attributes of merit, it shows you how demeritous it is, how bad it is to actually interfere in another person's love, partnership, peace of mind. Don't hurt other people. It's so simple. And that we, it's just, it's Mitra too. You know, the sixth, the Sadhana Nakshatra. That's, it's just, it's a basic law. And both of those Nakshatras deal with divine law in some way. Well, Ariyaman would deal more with, Ariyaman would deal more with the human law and the human condition and the Pitris. And Anuradha is specific. Mitra is cosmic law. So I just wanted to add that before we moved on because that's such a, you just nailed it at the end there with the emphasis on partnership and how much these people honor that. And so for people to go in and, and cause problems there, that's, that's a, it's a very it's a questionable thing, right? Right. So, okay. Just wanted to share that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, AG. Um, I think, yeah, that was great, actually, what you were reminded about, like, these people <laughs> might be more inclined to just interfere in relationships, you know, but that's exactly by, if you have planets there, you can positively use the Shakti of the Nakshatra there as a remedy for those particular planets. Yeah, that was really, uh, actually, very really Santipji and Eveji, I think these were the nuggets of uh, today's session. I think this is beautiful that both of you have bought this. Very, very, very important. And what I would say is people, if you feel that you're going through uh, you know, a bad patch where you feel that those planets which are sitting in Uttara Falguni are not helping you, one of the best things that you can do to energize is to help a friend during their wedding you know, or a marriage. Be a, or help them stay together help, if help they're having problems. If they have problems. So wedding planners event organizers for these great you know gatherings like events like marriages or you know engagement or even organizing somebody's wedding anniversary you know that a friend's wedding anniversary is coming up why don't you you know have a, a, a surprise party for <coughs> those people <coughs> energizing your uttara falguni because you're trying to bring two souls together you're honoring their union you're honoring their union by you know doing a wedding anniversary uh, surprise party for them so things like this, I think this is the most important part, part of learning and understanding nakshatras. It's not about just going and you know rattling out whatever you know. It's but these are you know little tits, but they are very 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 profound. So thank you, EFG and uh, Santipji, beautiful. I know Aditya and Bharat want to add something. I will I want to welcome them to add, please. So I would like to. Uh, thank both Santeep and uh, Eve for adding these very vital points to this session. I think extremely important and vital points. Uh, I just want to recall a point that Santeep had made earlier. He has connected uh, Ut uh, Uttra Falguni with Spain, which is bullfight. And perhaps you can also connect uh, Uttra Falguni with Madurai, which is famous for the Indian bullfight, which is Jalikatu. So I think, uh, I think these are very, very important points when you analyze the chart. I think these really uh, 
stand in very good stead. And as uh, Eve uh, just mentioned, you know, I have significant planets in uh, uh, the Falguni. So Surya Namaskar, you know, is a very important uh, thing in my life, uh, sun salutation. And while most people want to go on a morning walk when the sun is not yet up, I like to go on a walk when the sun is high in the sky and the sun is blazing, you know, and when the skin gets burnt, because I think when the skin gets burnt is when you get the vitamin D and you don't get the vitamin D when the sun is low on the horizon. Yeah. So I think that's one more point uh, that I would like to add. Um, so very, uh, very important points, uh, Santip and uh, Eve. I think these are really, really critical points. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's very interesting, uh, Bharatramji, that you mentioned about Jalikat. Uh, you know, the main uh, way to see and understand the energies of an area, the main temple there. So Madurai is the Madurai Minakshi Amman temple. Mm -hmm. So it's like Kriya Falguni there. You should expect some kind of bull kind of thing going on there. That's exactly <coughs> what's going on there, you know. So just extending that logic, you might wherever you find bull kind of theme, like, you know, like Spain or wherever, wherever in the world you find a lot of dealing with bulls. That could simply have uh, the, those areas could simply have those uh, Uttar Falguni energy a lot more. There might be people getting married there, or marriage could be a big part. The, in Spain, the siesta is an important part of Spanish culture. You know, having a nap, all about bed and Uttar Falguni, and uh, yeah, that's so exactly that. You know, you can see all the connect many themes. Now uh, I'll just move on to like uh, looking at the pi padadi of uh, Uttar Falguni nakshatra. Yeah, go ahead, Doctor. I just want to add one more point. Is I remember there was a, uh, one of our you know, discussion, we have a research group. So one of the later, uh, you know, um, maybe is in the group, uh, she has been communicating with me that she's uh, been into a very long distance relationship for quite some time. And, uh, you know, they were engaged, you know, uh, her boyfriend and her have been engaged, but it never materialized into something that, uh, because he was leaving and uh, working in a far off place and she was here. And I remember, you know, uh, I advised her that she should visit uh, Minakshi Amman Temple in Madurai. You know, that's because me and Santip had actually gone there a week before and I found the energies of there is very, very powerful. When me and Santip visited uh, Minakshi Amman Temple, uh, when was it? About uh, two months ago, Santip? Yeah, something like that. Right. Ago, yeah. And then I advised her just because I'd been there, I found the energy because there is a great thing called as Kalyan, uh, Kalyan, Kalyan Vishnu. What is Kalyan it? Sundaram. Uh, uh, so Kalyan Sundaram. Yeah, Sundaram. Kalyana Sundareshwar or Kalyana Sundar. Yeah. That's, that's right. uh, you can see a statue with uh, Vishnu, which was called as uh, Kalyana Sundareshwar. And he is actually getting Minakshi married to Shiva. I mean, he is like the brother. He's like the Aryama who is actually uh, celebrating the marriage of Shiva. And he is, he's standing beside, uh, you know, Parvati or Minakshi, right? And then there is Shiva who's standing there. So he's, he's doing it almost like the Kanyada, Kalyan Sundarishwar. So I told her that you visit uh, Minakshi Amman temple that if you are having this uh, problem, because that's when I realized, okay, Kalyan Sundarishwar. And you won't believe it. She went there and when she came back, I, you know, she came and said she has got an invite to go to a university in US where her, uh, you know, her engaged, um, whom she's engaged with, was very close to her university. She got an admit. And she was so happy that she's going to travel now to be with him. So you can see that, you know, the activations happen when you go to certain um, energy vortexes. And I, I feel for people who have very prominent clients here who have uh, finding it very hard to get into a union or a contract or uh, having a relationship, maybe honoring, you know, uh, Kalyana Sundreshwar and Meenakshi Devi Amman is a great remedy for you to actually forge that if you're seeking. And this just came to my mind. I thought I should share it with uh, the viewers. Maybe they'll benefit from this uh, sort of exchange of information. So, Santip, sorry to interrupt, but I had to say this because I think this will help people. You know, we have been yeah, there, definitely, uh, Doctor. Yeah, know the because, of, uh, and right. Yeah, especially in, uh, if you can't make it, you want a prayer to her. You know, something like that. Even that could even change things. You know, it's not so like. Uh, but uh, yeah. And there is another. Uh, 
thing, a ritual, something, if you remember the guide out there who was trying to tell us that what happens is people come with a garland, like the, right. the lady, you know, the young lady who wants to get married, who is desired to get married, they come with a garland and then uh, they, I think they give it because you can see, so Kalyan Sundresh were holding a garland and handing it over to Minakshi Amal. And then they come with a garland, they pull right. the garland, they take the garland with them. And once they get married, they're supposed to get the garland back and give it to Kalyan Sundresh. There's some ritual like that, if I vaguely remember, the, the guide out there who was trying to explain the thing to us, of how you know people who are unmarried, who want to get married, of getting to a relationship, uh, most of them throng to uh, Madurai. So I feel that's again, some uh, energy which has been activated once you're there. So I just wanted to add that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Like uh, the version of those rituals could be simply like honoring relationships, you know, as EG mentioned, helping in others' marriage, you know, like considering marriage divine and helping that play out, you know. So, like, even like honoring the garland could be like, you know, offering flowers, like helping uh, enabling smoother relationships between uh, other uh, marriages, you know. Uh, but yeah, all those are beautiful points, especially with the. Um, energy vortex of Akshyama and Dr. Pai because uh, that's a huge, very old temple, very ancient temple. And it's very interesting. There are a lot of rituals there. People from Madurai will definitely share a lot of stories. Um, but uh, I'll just go to Pai Padidi. Now, what is really interesting is that look at the Pai Padidi of this Nakshatra. Literally, like everything we discussed, everything, like we can see that. Um, so, what is the... Uh, so, let's see. what. So, we are dealing with... Uh, Uttara Falguni Nakshatra. Uttara Falguni Nakshatra is uh, falling in. Uh, okay, this is weird. It's, Uttara Falguni Nakshatra is falling in. Uh, you know, Leo Rashi. Uh, here I have. Uh, let's see. Okay, I have this thing messing up, but. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Uttara Falguni Nakshatra is uh, ruled by Nakshatra Lord's son, as we know. It's falling in Leo Rashi. And uh, in the Pai Padidi system of soul cycles and Rashi Pada, it would fall on the, the fourth soul cycle. And the Rashi Pada, wait, let me just clean this up. This is interfering. It's interfering. Let's see. Has anyone noticed uh, a quality? This is just going to be quick, and it's kind of a question of spotting liars or wanting to call out liars. I have seen that. And now that you're just highlighting that sun debilitated in the third house, right. this is very fascinating to me, but I've seen a lot of people who are very interested in exposing, like kind of what you're saying about the critic, even right. people who want to expose something that's not true. So anyway, I just, right. um, so yeah, actually, yeah, that's a great point. You, yeah. Because I was, I forgot to mention these, these natives are naturally interested in adding reviews. These are the natives who will go on Yelp <laughs> and be adding all the reviews in hotel, restaurant is bad, this restaurant is great, you know. These are the natives who are naturally inclined to do that. Or they might have uncles who are inclined to do that, you know. And if you look at the reviews, like you're adding stars, a star is the sun, you know, sun is the planet and it's connected to stars. So they'll be like five star, three star, four star. These are the natives who are naturally inclined to do that. And they don't and like deception. They exactly. don't like deception. Yeah. 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 They so don't it's, like, it's, yeah. yeah. Sandeep, like Sandeep, why, yeah. why did you come to this? Uh, why did you come to this judgment about uh, reviews? How did you come to that? Because it's like a critic, modern day version of criticism. You are adding reviews. House, you know, you third, add reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Third house, your sun gets debilitated. From if you make, uh, you know, that's that's maybe what he was trying to pick up. I don't know. Sandeep, is that the thing? Because with Falguri. Yeah, that is uh, definitely. You know, uh, yeah, Uttar. So like about contracts and unions and, uh, you know, also well partnership and, uh, but uh, basically I was trying to connect uh, yeah exactly what Dr. Pai said, the sun debilitated in third house if you make this thing. But the thing was that the three paths of Uttara Falguni is actually falling in Virgo. So there is a natural side of them that is, that will be like a critic. That will be like, uh, they'll be upright for honesty. You know, that natural, can, can yeah. Me, that can, also, can I also yeah. add something? Just tell me, I'm yeah. asking the panelists, this is a, as a question. If it is falling in Virgo, okay, can you have these as critics of their own family or critics of food? Wherever they go to a restaurant, they will critic the food. I don't think the food is, you know, 
Do you see that? I don't know. I'm just asking. The second yeah. house. I'm using same principles what Bharat Ramji has used, and I'm using the sun there. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. I no doubt. I've seen. I do seen that. Yes, seen and that? of the family. They they could be the most responsible person in their family, or they won't understand how their family is functioning with their money, or money. Yes, food yes, critics also. are people who really enjoy food too, because um, Uttar Faguni is said to to really enjoy. Oh, really? It enjoy. loves okay. fine things, you know. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying sun is depreciated in the second house. Yes, so even, but they even, still enjoy. I don't know. Enjoy. I've okay. seen. Yeah, okay. but they will critique. I they think critique. that was a beautiful. Point. I don't know. From just, <laughs> that was, yeah. They are. Right. They have that side, right. which is good because they can save you from a bad experience. Oh, I am a right. I am a strong Uttara Falguni. So and, <laughs> and and do you see that the Uttara Falguni will always have the critic on the amount of salt? They say I think we can put a little more salt. Why? Because sun and salt. Okay. The sun people should take less salt because sun. You know, if you have a very strong sun, they say you should take less salt intake because of the imbalances that it can create. I don't know. That's what I, I've heard from, uh, you know, Ayurvedic. I could be wrong. But do these people critic about always about food? I think a little more salt would have done. I think it's bland. <laughs> the food uh, critics. You know, Santeep, Santeep I, I don't know how you came to this conclusion, but uh, as a Falguni native, I think it's absolutely right. For me, because uh, you took the third house and third house is the house of short travels. So whenever I travel and come back, the first thing I do is to go on trip, trip advisor and write a review about the hotel I stayed. You know, that becomes the over most important thing in my life after I come back, not to unpack, but to write a review about the hotel or to write a review about some other travel aspect, which is what I do. And I don't know how you came to Dr. Pai, the, the, the salt bit of it, because, uh, uh, you know, I'm always telling everyone, don't add the salt. Don't add the salt. I always say, if there's no salt, it's no problem. But don't add the salt, you know, or, or add a very small quantity of the salt. Well, Bharat so, Ramji, it says that if Saturn transits Uttra Falguni, there would be a shortage of salt. Oh, okay, wow, okay. Wow. This, I didn't know you this. know, little oh, fascinating things like that. Yeah, and the and the helpfulness of Uttara Falguni of returning from a trip, and the first thing you're thinking is to write a review, which is so helpful for other people. So this is a good example of that, you know, willingness to serve, willingness to inform, you know. Um, that's beautiful, wonderful. So that stars thing matches with me because, again, like when I was in school, you know, all questionnaires will be there. You have to put like one star is important, two stars, very, very important. Three stars is like very, very, this is surely going to come in the exam. <laughs> so number of stars will be increasing as you go. So I used to yeah, do these, that. So they, yeah, these natives are naturally inclined to draw stars whenever they are making an important point, you know, in their journals or something. They'll make a bullet point, natives will be like bullet point, star, picture, things like that. Yeah. Uh, some, some, some questions will have 10 stars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it used to be, uh, uh, yeah, actually, you can use the star. I, you know, probably these native will be more like the parents will be like, okay, here's one star. <laughs> Two star, you know, that's a parent thing to probably. You know. <laughs> Maybe there's, this is another thing we can do uh, another time. We have to, uh, this is something that I've keen, keenly observed. You know, people who have very prominent Satabisha, I know I'm uh, digressing, but I just right, want right, to make right. a quick point. Shatabishas would always like to draw circles. You give them blank exactly. paper and a pen, they keep drawing circles over and over. If it is a Bharani, they will start exactly. drawing triangles. You know, especially okay. inverted triangles or triangles. If it is Pushya, I've right. seen them draw or Punarva, so they will start drawing arrows. You know? Interesting. Um, I have known so many people who are who, who keep fidgeting with their, you know, during your time, when you're sitting behind in a lecture, during the school times, and the people who are not interested in the lecture, they keep doing some, you know, keep drawing something or drawing some. And you can see these people, now I realize, you know, oh, he, has, he was Satabisha, he kept drawing circles. Dr. Arjun Paiji, I'm not going to say which one, but I can confirm that. <laughs> Is it I can all? confirm that for sure. Yeah. Is it all of them or one of them? <laughs> Maybe all of them, who knows? 
<laughs> but I can tell you for sure that is accurate. <laughs> yeah, um, well, yeah, it's good. Yeah, but Balatranji, the, the critique part just naturally came uh, because uh, the mentor, like, you know, like these are the, these, there is a leadership side to them. So they're like, you know, these natives would go and explore something and then they would share information. Uh, so even if you, if you're teaching something, you have to critique among mix. There is a natural teacher within them too. And also, um, uh, the, but critique was mainly from the Virgo thing, which I was trying. You have to acknowledge that three padas are falling in Virgo. And Virgo is a natural critique, you know. So, so that was one uh, main reason why, why I think. And it was actually interesting because on Uttar Palguni day, I would be reading reviews or something like that would be happening. You know, so that's again how I came that, uh, came to that point. But yeah, yeah, the beautiful thing about Pai Padithi is that once Uttar Palguni has Nakshatra as ascendant, and you look at uh, the soul cycle is four, which is connected with four thousand. The first Pada of uh, Uttar Palguni is actually connected with Rashi Pada nine. So. You see, it was interesting that you mentioned but uh, there was some odd thing happening with your education. So ninth house can be, there can be some odd thing about education. But, uh, and the Pada's 2 to 4 is falling in Virgo. But uh, in this slide, we'll look at only the Pada 1. So, and uh, let's analyze that. So Nakshatra Lord is Sun. Sun is having its Mool Trikona in Lashi. And uh, Sun is exalted in ninth house in, uh, in uh, Aries, but it's exalted in Aries. Is debilitated in Libra. Now you look at uh, the houses of these particular Rashi. Uh, Moultricorn is falling in first house. Sun of Moultricorn is falling in Leo. It's first house. Exaltation is happening in ninth house of education. And uh, debilitation is happening in third house of uh, Libra. So, so now if you combine these teams and then you look at the fact that Sun is actually honor of first law itself. So many times I've Seen Trafalgar natives, uh, these natives might be very authoritative about their own health. Like they'll be for the doctors, they'll be like, this is, this is the only thing that works, I know it. And uh, they'll, that can, that I've seen that happening. These are naturally like, you know, they'll be like, um, these are the, this is the food that, that goes well for me and this is what I'll stick with, you know. They might, they might be their own uh, health, you know, practitioners, you know, like literally I've seen. And for them, their diet is also very important. Um, that's for another thing I've seen, with, especially with Virgo planets. Um, like what they eat is going to be important. Th that will be the next slide. But here, if you make uh, the sun moon connection with uh, so your body is connected with your own your own ideas, your own thoughts. Sun is the plant of individuality. So you want to be like kind of authoritative. Okay, this is how I want my body. The energy will play out here. Sun being debilitated in third house. So these are best friend energy. So like there will be this void of sun energy there. So this will, these natives will be trying to fill up that energy through events in their life or through actions or through words, speech, you know, thoughts. So they'll be like trying to, th th I think this is one of the why these Uttara Falguni is natural friends, you know. Aryaman is a leader amongst ancestors, even. like even involved in marriages. Why involved in marriages? Sun is debilitated in seventh house, the natural seventh house of the zodiac, which is Libra. So naturally they'll be very much involved in marriage, tracks, unions. Sun is exalted in ninth house in... Uh, Aries, so there is this natural strong leadership element in them, especially like this is the right thing. These are the people whom others will come and approach about uh, what is the right thing to do. These are the mentors of the society. These are the people who might have karmas with uh, mentors themselves and they themselves might be mentors eventually. So because of the sun being exalted. So that's a great, uh, great observation. And uh, one big thing here is that uh, you can see all these houses listed in this image for sure. Um, that's one thing. But uh, interesting thing is that um, how this Pada is falling in Leo and uh, the Navamsha of Sun, this Pada would actually fall in fifth house. So there is a natural creation, natural uh, luck, natural fortune that can happen. And I've seen sometimes the natives have strong influence of their father in law. There might be some kind of uh, fatherly karma, like either the father is a prominent or they might uh, have some karma with their father. Something like that can happen. In, in general, the father karma is very strong. And same thing with younger sibling karma also, because it's debilitated in third house. So it's kind of like the karma they have to like, they are forced to kind of deal with in, in general. Uh, so friends, karma, the, all those themes, and also Uttara Falguni Nakshatra energy will express itself through these houses. So like as Bharat Ramji beautifully mentioned that these might be the natives who might, you know, um, make policies and contracts with their family members. Or like they might be involved in like, you know, even to the extent of, I would say, Setting up their family members for other insurance policies, some mutual funds, something like that. You know, these are the natives who might be inclined towards that even. 
but there will be a lot of cons karma for these natives for sure that is one that is 100% so uh, this is one thing about pada 1 uh, i'll just go quickly over to pada 2 pada 2 to pada 4 and now suddenly you find that the rashis are same but the house positions will change so now the sun is uh, mutrikon in its 12th house is exalted in 8th house and it is debilitated in 2nd house so now look, dr pai said earlier like sun debilitated in 2nd house so there is, these natives are like very individualistic about their food why do i have salt you know don't add salt in my food because 2nd house is connected with food even money sun debilitated in 2nd house could also mean that they might get money from their father money from the society money from the government even and uh, also like sun is exalted in 8th house so these natives can have a great occult uh, knowledge you know they might be very much into very much into pra- uh, very dominating solar practices even you know like even connecting with the sun or connecting with some masculine energy and uh, sun is having his mulatra going in 12th house so one interesting thing i came about uh, this is nakshatra research website was that uh, the female porn stars female porn stars have a lot of moon in uttar falguni happening so they looked at saudi porn stars saudi or so porn stars and then 30 about like half of them had a moon in uttar falguni or uttar badrapada so there was a strong connection of this animal porn stars why if you if you look at this vargopada immediately it becomes clear because the sun is having its moon trigon in 12th house and uttar falguni is also connected with bed so if a female has a, especially female porn star sf has a planet here in uttar falguni they might be very masculine and uh, masculine nature is to like you know go procreate a lot so naturally they might be involved in business like that you know you, they, they, they might be think they might be thinking like that they will be like okay procreation is the best way let, let me get involved in porn stars that is one way but on the other hand these these might be again involved with uh, you know a um, lot of hidden uh, there was a lot of private privacy that was involved like they might be very a pr- private about lot of matters about their individual opinions like choices have is where they have the sun it's multra con and uh, they might be very private about their contract so they might have a lot of contract shall dealings happening in a private fashion especially and uh, these natives might also be like what, one interesting thing was that aditya was having food at midnight you know so like sun is having his multra con house and sun is debilitated in second house so like you know these natives might be more in play of food this debilitation energy during midnight you know especially at their bed they might eat a lot of food in their bed they might do everything in their bed they might wash the bed you know everything can, can happen in the bed so nothing, nothing uh, only food <laughs> <laughs> right you know but uh, food and study but the, yeah but see the bed or couch even you know the couch is also the natural these natives are naturally inclined to like they can have communication and discuss at the couch these are natural people who will be like come sit on the couch let's have a talk you know they'll have a prominent couch uh, in their uh, home or these natives might simply like sleep on the couches a lot more that can also happen because of the sun's connection with uh, sandeep ji may i add to the the uh, the <laughs> adult yeah. film world that you were right. discussing. Um, just before you move on to that, it's very fascinating you bring that up because I think, um, you know, you're right. That is something, there's a very classic, one of the first classic pinups that did um, some of this like erotic type posing and all. She's Uttra Bajrapada and Uttra Falguni both. What I find interesting about it is that um, we often see it as masculine. But in some ways, it's also the independent female that happens in nature. It happens in nature. I don't want to vilify these women because in some ways, it's the independent female kind of owning her her sexual sensuality. And you will see that. I'm not I'm not saying bad or good. I'm just saying that that sign like even Elizabeth Taylor, she was a major sex symbol. But she's very, even though she's married numerous times and she got money from each union, but she was always seen as a very independent, almost like um, a goddess type force. So it's very fascinating how this energy could be even darkened to, you know, like borderlining on abuse, which a lot of that stuff can be. Um, the eighth and twelfth house axis, all that eighth house energy. 
Wow. Right. Yeah. That's so you highlighting. This is very interesting because you're, I've seen the same, I have seen these very independent, even today in our, our acting world, you'll see a lot of very beautiful women with Uttara Falguni that, that play important. that element. And beauty is a very important and very interesting point you mentioned. And maybe I want to say what Aditya Ji said is about Denobola. You know, there's only one star there, very prominent star. That gives them singular. the prominence. Singular. But they, that is their like way. the queen or the, the king. Queen. Yeah. The king. And, but That's then, what I, I just, yes. I didn't want to vilify these women no because they're also, you know, so I don't want to say it in this harsh way, like they're masculine or they're this, because honestly, it's a part of femininity too, to do that. They're in nature, you find it in various species. So um, there is that element and they're like that. And one more, <laughs> you know? one, one more theme I would like to add to what Sanjeev is adding, you know, um, I was talking about uh, this people from the adult entertainment industry. They are the people who are very, very independent women, but they would be also attracted to occult sciences because sun is in the, you know, the eighth house. They will find an affinity to occult sciences. Astrology would be a great draw. You would find a lot of such women wanting to come and get a reading. Gravitating to astrologers. Yes. You are absolutely right. That is, that is another thing that you have to see. You know, it's not only- They actually, a lot of them have very strong intuition. Very strong intuition. Yes. They're very, very, and they're very expressive. And that's why they try to express their energies because it's Chayana, it's a merit also, you know, and that they express through that. I think you can see both of them, you know. And so I, I, you're right, we're not trying to vilify anybody or any profession. We're just trying to bring out, I think Santip is bringing out these um, unique. Beautiful points. Yeah, beautiful points, very, very uh, profound. You know, but actually, a lot of what he has said, Santipji, I have to say, you have been so accurate. I have to say, since you started talking, so many things that you have said accurate, I think, yeah. have been very so spot, very organized and spot on. So wait, I just yeah. wanted to add that little thing, just like the bulls. I <laughs> it's so right. true about Spain, and it's so true. I just don't want people running around killing bulls. <laughs> you know? right. so, there's other well, ways uh, to prove manhood. <laughs> right, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, even like uh, what brother mentioned about Godfather, the sun being exalted in eighth house is like the Nadon, you know, <laughs> like eighth house, kind of, these are like the natural Godfathers, definitely, you know, they'll have a Godfather vibe about them for sure. Sun having his smooth throat Jolene was like the Godfather, literally the man behind the scenes who is running the show. And naturally, the, you know, directors and art, art filmmakers, what all those kind of people can be here also. Um, May but yeah, uh, I, Bharat Ramji should we we both need to go to Spain, Bharat Ramji. Please book a ticket. <laughs> yeah, but we, we all can. Uh, you know, it's not for the bullfight, but to you know experience Spain in general. You know, Spain is a beautiful. Place. No, no, only Uttara Falguni people can do. <laughs> so who who's yeah, Uttara but, Falguni? Put their hands hands up or hands down. <laughs> hands down for all Uttara Falgunis. <laughs> but uh, what what? <laughs> But I didn't understood this, both hands up and down, so I don't know. <laughs> but but uh, it depends yeah, which hand one, was up, uh, because one, I, one hand is Uttara Falguni, other one is Puro Falguni. So, ah, right hand, <laughs> left hand. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, Dr. Pai, also, you didn't you mention one uh, great point the once before when you were discussing about the north direction and the right hand? Yeah. You mentioned that, right? Could you like briefly mention that? I, I can't remember what it was, but I think uh, the direction uh, is east for Uttara Falguni, right? And Uttara means north. Now, but there are two schools of thought. Downward Some, facing nakshatra, right? No, uh, the direction of uh, the direction. direction yeah, east. Direction, it might be east, yes. Okay. Yes, but it's Uttara, facing yeah. the But it's a down, downward facing nakshatra. And um, if you, I think it, it was a point that I was trying to make that if you're looking towards north, on your right side is where you have Uttara Falguni. And that's why maybe you're right, Uttara, Uttara, the right. chief. But it again depends, you know, some, some schools of thought say, oh, Uttara means left. But Uttara means the chief, the chief or the most uh, prominent. So if you're right-handed, then that would be a prominent hand. If you're left-handed, then left hand is your prominent hand. 
So it maybe it would change with what people say, but I was saying, I would rather connect uh, Uttar Falguni with the right hand and Puru Falguni, but there right. are schools of thought who say, you know, Puru Falguni is right hand and Uttar Falguni. Again, it depends on, uh, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, one last thing I want to add here is that the animal, the bird that is associated with this nakshatra is peacock. So I've seen a lot of people who have been psychedelics and psychedelic, you know, just like the natural, like, you know, rainbow colors, you know, and that's sort of why what you mentioned about Indrayoni was very fascinating. Like also this, like, uh, you have like all the hippies who are wearing like, you know, all the multi fabric, these natives might even like uh, potentially put colors upon fabrics, like on clothes and make their t-shirt, they might hand dye their own t-shirts, you know, I've seen that sometimes. Uh, these need, because the sun is debilitated in second house, which is ruled by Libra, uh, which is ruled by Venus. So there's a natural connection that can happen with clothes. They might be very particular <laughs> clothes even, you know, that's also possible. Um, yeah, that was one point. Uh, it was very interesting that, uh, you know, also the peacock is connected with poison. Yeah, one more point I just yeah, wanted to add, Sandeep, uh, sorry to interrupt. Is interestingly what I came to my mind is uh, Pratika Nakshatra is, uh, you know, Muruga or Skanda's thing, which is very strongly connected to. And if you see, this is the 10th Nakshatra, which is the Karma Nakshatra, I feel, from uh, Pratika. Is that correct? Is my calculations right? Yeah. Is it the 10th? Yeah, yeah. So 10th right. Nakshatra from any Nakshatra is the Karma Nakshatra. So I can see that, you know, why this connection of uh, people with. And uh, one of the things that uh, a saint actually that I was interacting with, who he told me is for Uttar Falguni, for Kritika, and all the Karma Nakshatras, which are related to this, they they can actually benefit from doing a silent meditation. Is It's called, uh, you know, um, you use the sword of Skanda in your meditation, you create a cocoon of purple color, like the colors of uh, what you see in the uh, in the, the feather, the peacock feather, peacock, he yeah. says, right. uh, create a cocoon and then you have to actually use the veil of Skanda to cut the cord, which connects you to these people or these uh, spiritual things, cutting the, the astral from the corporate. That's what he said. That's a great technique. He says, if you want to let go, because Kartika is going to come and cut. That's the scissors, it's Kritika. So Dr. Arjun Paiti? Would that be for Uttarashara Nakshatra, actually? Because I think that's the 10th yes. from Baguni. Yeah. And then from Uttarashara Kritika would be Kritika, the... yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, from just wanted Kritika to clarify time. that for students. And... For students. Yeah, so, from, yes. so from Kritika, to, this will be the 10th, right? Uttara Falguni will be the 10th from Kritika. Uttara Falguni would be the, yeah, for Kritika. And then Uttarashara would be the Karma Nakshatra for Uttara Falguni. So even your point earlier, Dr. Arjun Paiji, that was brilliant about enemies, Actually, that makes a lot of sense now. It being the tenth nakshatra. Tenth nakshatra, the karma, yes. the actions which are there, and the lot of actions is skanda, muruga. So he says, use this as a meditation. If you feel that you have too many uh, people, uh, competitors or people, enemies that you are building up, and you have prominent clients in any of these sun nakshatras, then you have to use skanda meditation. Use his veil. Veil is his spear, sharp spear. He says, that is the thing, meditate and cut this bond with them so that you don't get into any more sort of animosities that you're building up. Use that to cut and right. let go of, forgive. So this is Nakshatra Tara, correct? Tara, uh, when you say 10, it's called Tara Nakshatra concept. Tara, yeah, you say now Tara analysis or you can say Tara Bala, Tara Bala. Tara Bala, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, one, yeah, the thing with peacock was that I had uh, natives uh, say that I had, I, I grew peacocks or I grew, <laughs> I had come into my home, you know, doing some practice, something like that, you know, I, a peacock related incident, I've seen that uh, as an observation or they might, these natives might be more inclined to have a peacock feather in there, you know, uh, uh, or something like that as some people do in India. And that is one thing I've seen with uh, the Falguni. But yeah, Dr. Pai, I think uh, that's about it, uh, you know. But yeah, it's a very interesting point that you mentioned about the Skanda meditation where you are doing, so you said that you have to imagine a purple purple cocoon and then you, you are in Skanda and uh, his whale cutting the... See, it also, some, uh, the same person, this, he also said, even the Westerners can do it 
with uh, Angel Michael because Michael is supposed to, Angel Michael also is supposed to come and cut. He's like a skanda. He has a sword. Angel yes. Michael has a sword. Right. And that is what he says. Right. You can use, either you can imagine uh, Michael, Angel, coming and cutting this. Can you, right. yeah, you can hear that beautiful, you know, <laughs> Bird. Bird. It's, yeah. Really interesting. Uh, yeah, six thousand natural six thousand pets also. These natives will be more bring pets. All of that. Yeah, what EG mentioned, animal uh, rights actors, uh, pets. But yeah, it's uh, very interesting that so you are talking about Uncle Michael visualizing them, visualizing him and coming and cutting the problems, the leakages with that cocoon. That, is that right visualization? Yeah, because you can imagine that you are uh, attached to them because of you might have some disagreement with them because that is kind of creating a, a psychological uh, link with them and that's why you are trying to fight right. against it because you're linked when you link it's as though they are very you know they, they are actually binding you from moving freely and moving on so basically use the, the spear of uh, angel michael or use the veil of practically uh, of skanda to cut this bond and let them free so that you are free so that they don't come so it's a psychological technique of trying to free yourself from um, you know enemies or enmity or negative attitude towards you at the same time bless them bless them that you know let them be because it's a sixth house thing you know right and right so anyway guys right. i think um, beautiful session excellent discussion so many fantastic points which have come out um, you know I really hope that you know um, couple is not going to ban us from doing any more videos for them and I hope the viewers are not going to <laughs> come very hard because I know there was a comment last time that somebody mentioned the longest ever Bollywood movie that was made in the history of Indian cinema was Border I think and we did it again <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only two and a half hours. Like two hours, twenty-five minutes. No only, only. only. <laughs> so I think we have not crossed over. We have not yeah. made a new record. Yeah, but we have one. We have one more person who's going through all of this. breath I know. <laughs> this is how you know. But welcome to the gang. Um, you know, <laughs> this is how we do. This. We learn a lot. What? Okay. Bharat, Bharat Ramji, you are lucky. We are not gone that much. So. <laughs> that much. <laughs> I like this yeah, we have gone thing. six hours too. Six hours is our maximum duration. We're we're helping him work out his karma because he could have become a famous movie director in this. <laughs> so he's <laughs> working it out through us. Yeah, I but I think this is great, guys. I think uh, thank you, Bharat. Uh, thank you, E. G. Thank you, Santip, and thank you, Aditya. Brilliant session. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye bye. Thank you. Namaste.